I mean, like George Costanza says, it's all pipes, right? It's just all pipes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think the <laughs> pipes are graded for different payloads. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Um, Navarine, you'll love and, it. Like, don't imagine worry. trying to like squeeze it in with your toe because it's not all going oh, all the way in. Oh my gosh, you know that's I mean? a like, horrible idea. All right, I'm not doing that. Well, though. what are you gonna do? It's not like <laughs> it's gonna Scott puddle hasn't thought up about the logistics the of it. <laughs> It's going to puddle up at the top, and then by, when the clump doesn't want to go in, what do you do? You're in the shower naked with no tools. No, you've absolutely... You've you wear tool belts. <laughs> Never mind. I, I solved it. You wear a tool belt in the shower. Oh, yeah. That's fine. That's good. Plus, who you know, clean tools. Bonus. All right. Let's do the uh, the show here. Here it goes, everybody. Enjoy this uh, as I count it down in three, two, one. You've returned. The old ruins are clear. Your town should be safe now. Truly. Ha! Huh. By the light, you are heaven sent. Hello, greetings, and welcome back to another episode of Core for Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. I am Scott Johnson, and Bo Schwartz and John Jagger are here with me as well. Hello. And, yeah. Hello. Hi. Hey. Uh, I had a little. I had some time on the uh, Garrett and Kyle podcast, the Grinding Gears today. I guessed it on there. Great podcast. People can check that out. It's lots of fun. There are good friends. And um, Dragon Beef came up on there. We talked about it yeah. a little bit pre-show, but um, and I didn't know John was in the chat room. All right. So this was unknown to me. But John, is it okay that we drag our our Dragon Beef around town and share it with others and have it? I think things? if you have quality Dragon Beef. Yeah. You owe it. It is your, it is your, uh, what's word I'm looking for? Fiduciary prime directive. Oh, there you go. That'll yeah. work. Yeah. To, to spread that dragon beef around, spread that love, uh, or hate for dragons everywhere. Okay, good. I even played our little, uh, dragon beef thing on there and they all enjoyed it. So we, we hashed it out. We decided what dragons are cool and which ones aren't. And it seemed to me that. By the votes, anyway, I pretty much won the entire argument, and uh, it's all mm -hmm. done now. We're done now, and Dragon Beef can be put to rest finally after I Look, won. The most amazing thing about declaring yourself the winner is it doesn't have to be supported by logic or facts. <laughs> That's right. If I've learned John, anything from recent years, it's that. Yes, Bo. John has a calm confidence wherein he knows in two or three years they're going to play Final Fantasy and come around. Probably. Maybe sooner and than Garrett's that. Garrett's in. It, like the whole thing started with uh, Scott remind or Garrett reminding Scott that he tried to get Garrett into Final Fantasy. I did. Garrett I was going to pivot. No. Yeah. He said, no, I'm not playing that dumb anime game. Those were his words at the time. <laughs> now he's like a Final Fantasy superstar. <laughs> yeah. Now that's all he wants to play. So, you know, yeah, just never say never. You never know where you're going to end up. The instance <laughs> almost. Be careful. Yeah. And, and on top of that, I reminded Scott this week that I almost gave up on Final Fantasy. I hit a weird lull and went, I don't know if I'm ever going to find the fun in this. And Scott bought a skip to Heaven's Word and said, oh, you know what, John? There really is something special here and convinced me to keep going. <laughs> so every time he has to deal with hearing about Final <laughs> Fantasy 14 or Dragon Beef, he did it. He's laying in that. a bed he made. I didn't know that that detail aren't That's you news. aren't you about due for your negative review john that starts with i've played 2000 hours and this game is utter shite yeah they've lost their way <laughs> or aren't, something aren't like you, that. you're getting pretty close to that time right <laughs> uh, yeah i think i might be well beyond my 2000 hours i, I may have missed I've it i may played have played 8000 hours and let me say i can't recommend this game <laughs> <laughs> can, yeah. can you do that in that game can you do like a slash played type thing kind of i'm scene? at according to steam because i have it through steam oh, i'm yeah. at 2579 <laughs> hours Oof. that's a lot that's a lot that's a lot yeah, how much of that? Oh, is the launcher sitting idle for a while and you not playing? That's the worry I have with Steam. There's, Checking. there's probably a decent amount of that. There's definitely, I mean, even in game, I, you know, Final Fantasy until they started having those big logging queues, you could stay AFK in the game; it wouldn't boot you. Oh, that's and right. And so yeah. it was not uncommon for me to put on the AFK camera, which just focuses on random things and changes it up every now and then. Yeah. Uh, throw that on and walk away from the game for a few hours. So yeah. it's, it's so fine. it's fine. Yeah. It all, but but on average, you're in there playing, and that's a that's a good amount. Two thousand hours is a freaking lot of time. So congratulations, yeah. you did it. Dragon Beef won. <laughs> somehow, somehow he still wins. <laughs> all right.
right. Hey, um, we are going to get right into it and not talk about a giant news story uh, other than the one that matters to us most, and that is the Diablo 4 beta experience that we had last weekend and that we hope to continue to have tomorrow. Uh, look at Bo, Bo. For those at home who can't see the video, Bo's got a 16-hour timer countdown on his screen because uh, that's how long until the beta reopens. The uh, Blizzard got out today and warned everybody of long queue times, which I think I sort of expected, but... Because this is open beta and not select buy-in, either double down KFC or buy the game uh, as a pre-order beta, this is everybody can get in and play it. it uh, I suspect it's going to get crazy and a little nutty. Yeah. So if they handle it really well, if things go super well tomorrow and the queues are not that bad, I might actually be really impressed with that because open beta is a whole different animal than than select beta. So we'll see. But anyway, that's tomorrow. Um, we all played it. We all have a lot to say about it. Let's just do a couple of basic things here, uh, just to kind of get us, uh, down the road. Um, all you could play at the beginning of that beta was Sorcerer, Rogue, and Barbarian. And mm -hmm. each of us, uh, I tried all three, but I stuck to one. I think we all kind of did that. Although, Bo, you had no, two. I, I only played the Rogue. You only played Rogue? Uh, I play, I tried all three, but okay. I only seriously played Rogue and Barb. Okay. So Barb, the furthest I saw from you was Barb. I never saw you do your rogue, but I just probably missed that stream. Um, I played mostly Sorcerer, but I did play a few levels of both Rogue and Barb, and John focused on Bar or on uh, on Rogue. Um, the let's talk about those classes. Like as far as those being the classes in the game, are we pretty happy with that? Did we feel like those were representative of? what we might expect from the two others. Cause that's the two others I'm most excited about. If I'm honest, like they're at least like the weirdo classes that I gravitate to. Um, I like having pets and weird transformations and funky blood work and all that. And these aren't, these aren't that these are kind of your traditional, here's your wizard type. Here's your, uh, your sword and uh, bow type. And then over here, you got your, uh, your big ax and your, pound the ground and spin and kill things type those are all great and everything but those aren't really my uh thing as much as they are yours so let's let's start with the rogue uh john what do you think about the rogue and how was your time in diablo 3 uh Four. so the rogue the rogue <laughs> feels really good yeah. uh but here here's so here's what happened um i started and i was gonna be a stabby stabby rogue do do rogue things that was the plan yeah and i kind of realized early on like oh right rogue traditionally in diablo is also about archery and like there's a ranged element to it as well right and i was like oh screw that i'm gonna be stabby rogue that's what i want to be and sure enough uh all i got magic item wise for the first little bit was bows and still had really crappy swords and daggers and I was getting these awesome bows and I was like, well, I guess uh, the loot gods have decided for me I'm going to be a ranged rogue and that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I built as. And I made the coolest character build. I loved it. It was so good. Um, I just, you know, wave, waves of enemies <laughs> would come. And Shadow I would just infusion. watch them explode. Yeah, Bo played a little bit with this. Sh with this Shadow, rogue. All the powers of Shadow and Fusion. Yeah. <laughs> Shadow it fusion is. is and it's so, yeah. it's so good. It's so good. Everything just explodes. It's amazing. And I was like, man, rogues are really cool. I love it so much. It's so good. And then Rogue and I, uh, Bo and I beat. <laughs> beat Bo. <laughs> Whoops. You and Rogue beat this Bo. Is how much, this is how much I love rogues. It just takes over every pronoun I'm going to say. Sure. Um, we, we did the world boss together. And. Yeah, all that dropped was melee weapons for oh. me. I got like a ton of melee weapons and like melee build items, and I was like, "All right, well, I'll try it. This is what I wanted." Do you think it's because it looked at your current build and or inventory and went, "Oh, this guy doesn't have any melee shit. We should give it to him on this." No, I think it was. I think it. I think it's random. I okay. genuinely do. Okay, but I was. It turns out I was sad <laughs> because all rogues are not built the same. Yeah, but and my you, experience you, doing melee was very different from my you, experience doing range. Yeah. Did you dig into the 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 actual legendary system? Because you can just make your own legendaries with by like, yeah. And I had done a little bit of I had done a little bit of that. Um, in fact, I had actually uh, run out of money between uh, respecking and moving legendaries, pulling properties off of them, upgrading items. 
uh, and I had made myself broke and I couldn't quite get back to the way I wanted to uh, mm. cheaply uh, by that point. Um, or I couldn't afford it, I guess. It's just what it what it comes down to. And uh, I didn't like Melee Rogue at all. Um, at all? It felt, it felt more punishing because I was in more mechanics. It felt harder to play and the damage output seemed worse. Like literally every checkbox that could be worse, it was. So I do have a little bit of a concern for balance because the experience on one was completely different from the experience of the other, at least at this stage in the game. Mm. Maybe late in the game, maybe I picked the wrong talents, although I did try a couple different things to try to get melee to work. I just was never happy with it. Um, so there may, and I did hear, um, but I'll let people who played it speak to it. I did hear Barbarian felt pretty underpowered as well. I don't know if that's yeah. true or not, Cry but um, I, uh, <laughs> I, I did not like the melee experience, but uh, the ranged rogue was an insanely good time and I loved how it felt. I'm really surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised. I guess the game gave you a great experience with range, but you're not normally going to lean that way. You like backstabby no. melee business and it's funny how it pulled you away from that and made you a more ranged character without you really knowing right other than it felt it just, good the, the problem is is that it, it felt like the builds were about if you like if you look at the talents a lot of it is like damage mitigation through like getting health back mm -hmm. but all of it is tied to having um vulnerabilities tied to the to the enemies but then it makes you jump through a bunch of hoops to apply those vulnerabilities. And you're surrounded by enemies trying to put very specific debuffs so you can get your health back. And you cannot outpace the fact that like half the stuff that is dangerous in this game, whether it's a pool of poison or one of those little spinning shock traps or whatever, is really heavily impacting if you're in melee, if you're trying to stay in one spot. And you can't outpace the damage that's being done by it through the healing mechanics that's in the game. I think it needs some tweaking. I don't think it's unfixable. I don't think that like when the game comes out, you should never play melee. But for my experience, I felt grossly underpowered when I tried to do a melee build. Interesting. Uh, Bo, you focused mainly on the barb. I played barb, yeah, yeah. and uh, a lot of people talking shit about my boy. I, you know, I did play a bit of sorcerer too. Barbarian was by far the best experience. Hmm. I like play. So, here's the thing. I'm gonna talk some shit right now. Do it about content create other content creators. Do it complaining. Um, I think I think people have an expectation that when they play a game like Diablo, that they're making a build so that they can wipe out the screen and empty it. Hmm. But I actually prefer the harder challenge of the barb and having to do all that stuff, move out of the way of toxic stuff, because I actually feel like it's a closer contest. Like I'm playing a, a challenging thing where I have to not be selfish and just, you know, hit. I have to like walk out of the way, take a break, run around a bit, dodge, get back in, but blow my cooldowns. Mm -hmm. So like my experience, which I don't know, like the, 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 the major content creators that have, um, who don't just like ARPGs, but clinically like ARPGs. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a little bit of a mental health disorder. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it, like, you know, like they just like it way too much and I can't relate to them at all. Yeah. Um, that like, it's actually fun. It's more mobile like to be able to move around and dodge and, and be tactical. And I feel like the actual classes that are broken are like the sorcerer and the ranged ones where it's like easy mode. I really enjoyed the range. I did what John did. I, I played ranged rogue as well. It was super fun. It was I was never in danger the entire time. Mm. Where with the barb, I was in danger. That was exciting. I found that engaging. Mm. People can like what they like. It's not to say um, that you can't, but there's another way to look at this, which is like you guys like wiping the entire screen and building to that optim optimal state. I like a contest, a close contest like Elden Ring, where you like I just barely got through that cool you know like um so and i sort of i think i think that's a direction arpgs generally should go in not the direction that you know d2r and path of exile are held up to this high standard i actually like i actually like the design of barb more than i like the design of the sorcerer and rogue mm. um and i just feel that that challenge was engaging 
Mm. Also, like it is has to do with legendaries. I don't know what they were building, but I had a pretty damaging build where um, I was able to uh, so charge and kick um, basically had the shadow infusion of inf- effect on them. Mm-hmm. So if something died, it would burst, blow up something else, and die like an exploding palm and monk or something like that. And then I had another legendary that when I used kick it would refresh the cooldown of leap and i had two charges on kick so i would leap kick leap kick charge and have cdr on um the kick so i put points into it to have kick up again and leap again so and then i had lunge like it's like everyone wants to play whirlwind barbarian i'm like whirlwind's the mo-. like i was so i was like i'm glad whirlwind sucks i, I don't want to have to pick this it's boring mm-hmm. uh lunging strike is amazing. It's a teleport to every enemy. So you click the button, you teleport, you hit. You click the button, you teleport, you hit. So I was the most mobile class out of any of the classes. I mean, the rogue is technically more mobile because they can wisp around, and I guess wizards can teleport. But like from a like a Hades, like if you think of the game more like Hades from like a, a tactical battle thing, I could zip around all over the place. And if there's a pool of shit, I just zip somewhere else, do that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not, like, in the camp. I feel like people are kind of looking at this through a lens of, like, oh, this is how I played previous games when I'm clearing and I want to do 50 runs of some, like, Rift or some Diablo 2 thing. And I'm like, no, no, I'm thinking about this from, like, a challenge playing the campaign perspective. Mm -hmm. And I felt the bar was by far the strongest. I'm going to be totally in the minority on this one. Let me me give you some support on this because I'm actually, I actually agree with you. I did not play the bar more than just fiddling with it for a couple of levels. But I can tell you, even the sorcerer, well, yeah, the the ranged classes might have a little bit of an advantage in terms of clearing rooms or, you know, just slightly less, less challenge or whatever. It is more challenging than the wizard in the last game. It felt more like two to me in that there's some tactical thinking that you have to do when you go into a fight. And the dash, which is controversial also, we can get to that in a minute, added uh, another tactical tool in my tool belt. And I ended up stutter stepping more. I ended up doing i ended up playing it like a moba like you mentioned a little bit more like a moba in a weird way where i'm actually dodging projectiles because to not dodge them is death and mm. it felt like a more tactical um rewarding fun game instead of what you what it, what Diablo 3 ended up feeling like for a lot of the times not that this is bad or made it a bad game but it would be walk into a place here's a bunch of things to kill vomit everything and now they're all dead move on to the next room and do that at some high you know some super high difficulty level that's fine for what it is but i really feel like the team in this case is trying for something that's more tactical more get in this into the scrum and figure out how you're going to do this boss fights are trickier they feel like raids um which i think is also going to be a hint to how things go in the end game but but they feel, you know, they've got stages or phases to the fights, and they're clearly marked when the next phase is going to start. You beat them down to that, then you have to kind of change up your tactics. Some of these bosses are shitting out stuff like bullet hell shooters, and you got to dodge like a wild person to get the hell out of that stuff. I found that stuff really satisfying and not super easy. It sounds like you're easy. playing a better version of Sorcerer than most. Yeah. Because there are some unkillable, oh, unkillable I'm sure. builds. Yeah, like, I'm sure there, there are. Like that was, Sorcerer is the one that's been like um, in the community touted as the most broken yeah. um, in the style that I mentioned. And that's sort of the always the problem with Diablo is like that thing you described, we probably shouldn't expect to see that at level 25. I think even Diablo 3 on launch at level 25 was kind of challenging and not like that. But it's sort of that end game area you get to where you're just wiping... Mm-hmm. you're just wiping everything out and tactics sort of takes a back seat and when the game when gameplay is the way you described that's when the, i find the f- games that the most fun when i'm playing you know I like, yeah so i totally so agree. i'm kind of like i would be sad if all i had to do is whirlwind and clear a room uh at least till we get to a point in this game where it's it's been out for a few years i played it a ton and we're just doing fun stuff you know what i mean so mm-hmm. yeah yeah but, well from from a quick sorcerer perspective perspective if you were a big wizard player in the last game you kind of know what you're getting into here um there's different stuff and different behaviors different abilities but a lot of it is similar like there's a you know a three-headed um 
Oh, what are they called? What's what's the three headed dragon? Hydra. Hydras. Thank you. Hydras. You have a Hydra ability, and as soon as I saw that, I went, "Oh, we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to continue that one forward." That's fine. I don't remember if the Sorcerer in two had a Hydra or not. Maybe it did. I don't remember. It's been way too long, but. Um, yeah, if you're looking for fun range with crazy magic, a little bit of glass cannon, if you're not careful, it it's exactly that. Um, I didn't, I, I, like I said, I had a more tactical, fun, and challenging experience than I expected. I wasn't aiming for any specific builds. I was experimenting all on my own. And uh, I find that fun in that game, so that's what I did. I only respect a couple of times. I was mostly happy with the choices I was making. Um, he's, he, I say he, mine was a he. Uh, I found him really fun. I found all of the play of every character that I tried, even though they were low level for the other the other two classes, to be so snappy and so like just viscerally like um, satisfying, like tight and accurate. And I wasn't having lag issues at all, so I don't know if that was everyone's experience or if I just got lucky. This of the course only was the lag was day. leaving a zone sometimes. Kind of you kind of got hung up on it. Yeah, that was the only time I really had any trouble was in the city just trying to leave zones or transition to another zone or whatever. Um, but in the actual, like, out in the out in the wilderness or in caves or in a dungeon or two, I didn't have any of that problem. And the fights didn't feel like I was internet dependent, even though I, I guess we all are, whether we like it or not. Um, it just felt really good. And that's what I need. I need that feeling. Uh, speaking of feeling... John talked about this a little bit on his Twitter post. I want to explore it more. This game is obviously aiming for a darker tone than three. Uh, John, you used a great example. I used it again on the show this morning, but this uh, this concept of Diablo 2 was rated R. The sequel was rated PG-13. This sequel is now the third movie. Well, third in the series is now rated R again. And Yeah, it's one of those things where I feel like people who have problems with the tone of Diablo three. I, I think that's my favorite way to say it is that it's like when your favorite, our uh, favorite rated R horror franchise um, has a PG 13 release to try to appeal to a more mass audience. And you're like, ah, oh, there's plenty to like here, but it doesn't feel the same as what it was. This does feel like a return to the roots tonally for yeah, that. For it sure. felt like, oh, we're back to we're back to a horror game at this yeah, point. Yeah, I agree. And I and I think it's the perfect swing. I love the tone. I like the super seriousness of it. I like the dark, grim dark, freaking greasy wall dungeon, nasty ass lighting. I love that stuff. But you suggested in your Twitter stuff that you thought maybe they over overcorrected. Do you wanna do you still feel that way or how how where do you sit with that? I think I think the tone is between like 90 to 95 percent totally right where I want it. Um, and I don't know if I would say that it's an issue more with tone. I kind of talked this through with uh, with my chat yesterday on a stream, and maybe it's more of a like Last Jedi issue where it's like, I feel like Diablo 4 is embarrassed of Diablo 3. <laughs> Oh my and gosh, this it's is great. Not, right. It's not, uh, and so I kind of, I didn't want to say it like flat out that way. And that's why I kind of was like, well, <laughs> the tone, the tone. <laughs> but the more I think about it, the more that's just how I feel about it. Diablo 4 feels embarrassed about Diablo 3. Mm, and boy. I think it's notable. In fact, I even made a, a bet with my chat room and I, I bet uh, gifted subs that when the plate wearing class gets put in the game, I would bet money that they call it Paladin and not Crusader because they do not want to associate with Diablo 3. Oh, they would rather have you think about no, Diablo don't, 2. Don't despite tell me that. I want fact, my monk. I yes, want my, monk. I want my witch doctor. That You're... Crusader is a much cooler name and better tonally for this universe than Paladin. Um, I'm not so sure. Joanna is a better, like, you know, evergreen character paragon for that class than I 100% who is the Paladin agree guy. With you. No, and I totally, I totally agree. I agree with you. I don't but think they're going to do I'm it, though. I'm telling you, I get a weird feeling that this game is embarrassed about Diablo 3. From a complete, like, lack of even nods to it, the closest you get is treasure goblins, which are a very Diablo 3 thing. But even the treasure goblins, like, gone is the fun personality behind the treasure goblin where they're like... <laughs> now, they still have a high-pitched voice, 
but they're they're it's more animalistic it's more like you just encountered a creature that like growls in a high-pitched voice yeah. like there's no, no fun personality to it they were just like no still demon yeah um Both and are, Barb i is think... mostly the same class from diablo 3 if you read the yeah that's my that. that's why i don't think there's much all to my that. abilities are like uh hammer of the ancients whirlwind uh bash frenzy and he's called I'm a like, barbarian i feel like i'm like Am I playing a sequel? These are literally yeah, all but the Barbarian same was in two, right? Yeah, like, two, yeah, two, yeah two I know they're all the same there too, so I know. But yeah, still, yeah, yeah. My, yeah it's I, a fair I, point. But John, maybe, I here's here's my I take. My point. take goes beyond this because I actually I totally relate to what you're saying, and I and I feel that same feeling, even though I don't think this thing is sentient enough to feel anything. But the I don't even think the devs feel this way. But I do think they were swinging for this, and it makes it seem like the game's embarrassed about its predecessor. However, I think that this game is aiming for such a long tail. Uh, business wise that we will see paladins we will see crusaders we will see oh you think we get both oh huh? we're getting everything eventually we're i don't mean everything? like right away but oh, i think we're getting every I've, class this series ever had plus a bunch we've never heard of i hope so i'm really like th this whole season plan and content pa like plan i hope it's not a drought and then one x pack i kind of been hoping they do a you know like a rise of the necromancer thing like yeah you know, they want it's, 10, it's, 15 it's been years eight months, out of this. Which doctor's coming out? Like, you know, maybe one or two per year is enough, but, and maybe like some content, like another zone once a year and then a big X pack. Like, feed the, feed this thing. They will feed it. I promise. I mean, I, 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 I want that to be clear. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I said, we're talking about what I think is between, I think even 10 is too high, like a 5% tonal piece that's missing for me and i would even go so far as to maybe just say i feel like this game has a big deckard cane shaped hole in it mm. uh that it has yet oh, to fill but Lorath, uh, i know I'm, I'm is Lorath. not no nope, nope, <laughs> fuck you that voice actor, Lorath that... is not a substitute for deckard <laughs> cane. The... he is he is a perfect example he's, he's the a last perfect example Horodrum. of the tonal issue you with this game because Lorath is a cool character. Like I'm, this, he's fine. His, his voice but actor, Deckard Kane. Deckard Kane existed in Diablo One. He existed in Diablo Two. He existed before Diablo Three, and it is proof that even when this series was dark, and even when this series was the the tone that they're going after. You could still have a guy that He's sounded tied like up a in weird sex dungeon. A <laughs> weird Sean Connery impression identifying items for a price. And yeah. I, I miss it. I'm I, tell and you, I think, I think as you're... much as I love Lorath's new voice, like he's so dark and like over the top, I think he's great. I miss the game's willingness to be goofy and it has yet to show it to me and i'm sure there will be some point where it's there i think that there's probably we, a cow level it, somewhere in the game this i the would same show where we shat on magda and kane's death for years like <laughs> you yeah. sure you sure we're not having a little amnesia about <laughs> butterfly death like here's the yeah, thing though i don't I think like the butterfly death because now he's dead and he can't be in diablo 4 i think all of this is I a moot like point because years. i think he's coming back i don't think there is no there's this game doesn't end up not having decker kane in some form he's either going to come back through some weird ritual or something like that's going to happen they can make him a playable character like because he's in heroes they can make him a class yeah they can make a class of old old geezer <laughs> geezer you identifiers play paladin uh barbarian or deckard you can play a deckard <laughs> i'm a level 57 deckard i mean i'm with john in that i miss that character hor character horribly and it it does seem crazy to me that a diablo game doesn't have deckard kane in it that he'll seems be insane. back but i kind of hope like it'd be nice if there was some mortality to this world and he's involved with the angels or the devil like hell or something yeah you i don't know what even I mean? want him back just have a book uh, just have him narrate the book he doesn't I'm sure he can stay dead I yeah. just I miss I'm they sure. they the had him in studio. Miss, they had him in studio. I miss doing, his willingness their willingness to put something as silly as Deckard Kane in the they, game. They they had him in studio doing all that VO for Immortal. I would I would be shocked out of my mind if he didn't have him all right, now let's do the reads for this thing we can't talk about, which is this whole other as, aspect of four. Like I'm I'm making all this up because I don't actually know, but I'll bet I'll bet ten bucks says I'll send you both ten dollars. 
if I'm wrong, but I bet Deckard Cain ends up in here at the very Just least. The voice of Deckard Cain. Wait, season. at launch or eventually? Is this going to be like the game comes out? He's not in it. You give us ten dollars, but then he's in a patch. Um, and we have to pay I'll give it. I'll back. say that he's in one of the uh, launch acts of the game. So okay. it may not be act one, but it, I think he'll be in an act of the game. That I'm a little I sad. I was hoping IMDb would have a, a cast for it. Yeah, I think they're, they're really well, secretive about maybe this. Maybe it does. Hold maybe on. it does. I don't know. But he, he I, I, so I'm, I'm kind of torn on this one because I think Lorath is really cool in this. And I'd love I that. I don't know what happened. He's so depressed and bummed. And we were so optimistic at the, at the end, you know, doing riffs in Diablo 3. Like, what happened in, in the intervening years to make him so, like, uh, stupid? He uh, took up smoking because an angel wouldn't <laughs> stop talking about all the goddamn food he ate. Now he's yeah. got a super deep and voice. He, he had a crush on Kadala. Like, did him and Kadala ever, uh, you know, do the thing, have a kid, and then maybe she left for some reason? Like, is Kadala part of all of the story? I don't know. That's the blood, the blood gem vendor in in Diablo yeah. Three. Right. Um, yeah. What happened to Tyrael? Like, he, him and Tyrael were chilling. That they were like, um, you they know, inseparable. Uh, yeah. uh, the Ricky and Julian in the trailer park. Like, they're, they're <laughs> yeah. the best buds. <laughs> You know, like, and where is Tyrael? He was a. Human. I will take back everything I said about this game not being willing to be goofy if Tyrael is in it, but he's like the new embodiment of gluttony or something, <laughs> and he's just a great big fat demon now. Would, if, yeah, but John wants something yeah, goofy. If, where where does the goofy line end for you, though? Is it like, oh, I can buy skins that make me look like a bunny for for Easter? Like, where where do you where do you put your your stick in the ground for that? Or do you? Do you for, care? For what? For this game in general. Like how goofy is too goofy for you? Oh, um, I mean, I think I think the correction that they've made from Diablo 3 is a good one. Like I think that cutscene, the church murder cutscene as I call it, mm-hmm. is a is a perfect embodiment of uh this game's tone being um Okay. In the in the correct direction. Yeah. Here, here's some comedy for you. Apparently, chat room saying Tyrael's dead in the grave. That Lor- when Lorath is talking, I missed that detail. Was that in that intro one thing the, they did years, years, ago? years here, ago? I guess it says here lies Tyrael. Oh, really? So really? he's just like dead. I that's don't remember what chat that. Chat room saying. I don't remember that at well, all. That's lamer than is that. Not true or are you just being Kane silly? <laughs> Hold on, Tyrael in because he's, he is mortal, right? He's, I did. Yeah, yeah, he's mortal, so it's conceivable that he died. Mm. Um, it would be awesome if they died. Well, now they're telling us to get wrecked. Oh my gosh! I just tried to search for where is Tyrael in Diablo Four, and the auto complete it said where is Tyrael in the Bible. There's no Tyrael um, in the Bible, you weirdo. <laughs> there's they're saying that's okay, the it's theory unconfirmed theory. Around. Okay, it's some way someone said uh, said it. It's like he died, and this is forty years later. No, oh. no, he's not. He wasn't dead. Okay, it's Loreth's pet cat that he named Tyrael. <laughs> that's after his great. He t- transported his soul into it. And that's why he's depressed. He used some dark magic to get that done, probably. Anyways, you know, Tyrael, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of him. Uh, Imperius is the one I, I need to see. I'm just like, what's Imperius? Doing? I don't think we see him. I'm going to put my prediction here. I bet you don't see Imperius. I mean, we don't I know what Lilith's up to. almost here. zero high heavens beyond uh, Anarius. Be- that would be... Uh, oh, I was going to so. bet. That's my bet. Oh, that's you interesting. Know what? I was shocked that we saw as much of Lilith and Anarius in Act 1 as we did. It was yeah. great. Not a complaint, but I thought, I mean, first of all, the tone of that opening thing when you're getting wheeled after saving that village, mm-hmm. that was that was very good. Yeah. That was, that was, that's like worth the $80. Oh, it was good. Play. It was like Resident Evil Village in a uh, prelude is what that reminded me it of. Did feel, it did feel like that. It was like, very yeah. well handled though. Like soup, like just everything about it. Even the poem was like, it was just a nice touch, very artistic and... <laughs> But then, you know, you get to see Lilith, you get to see Inarius, like in Act 1, there's some Inarius shit. And I'm like, oh, we're just like, we're just getting onboarded right into this conflict in like a huge way. So there's a five more zones, there's a lot of room for some shit to go down. And, yeah, uh, um, you know, we got our new Leia. 
Uh, I think I think she's going to end up being different, but the parallels are there, right? <laughs> she's not going to be oh Diablo again. I think no, that well, big. Her I think scene that with her mother is, was pretty disturbing. That right? annoyed like, me, actually. I'm sorry about this, but I story wise, everything's been fine so far. But she was such the Leia stand in. I did the whole time. I'm going really. It's it's so different because her mom was literally like you watched a Trump. That's a traumatizing thing to watch your mother be like, I don't care about you anymore. I'm going to follow gonna abandon you and then you have to raise her from the dead yeah just to get a few last words you know like i think she's gonna be a very different character it's very it's dark pro- you probably yeah. it's gonna be like an if they're doing it right it's an ahsoka thing where everyone hated ahsoka when she first came out and now like nobody can shut up about her she's super great mm. um i think they're just giving her a starting point she's a young adventurer setting out and i think it'll get better okay I don't, I'm and I don't think she's going to become that would be so like uninspired if that's literally Diablo again. Yeah. No, like, my prediction is the the, the black wolf is Diablo. I don't know how that works out, but that's my yeah. prediction. Yeah. Could really? Because Could be. the 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 black wolf that like saves you at the beginning, he says he saves you. I don't know, he didn't look like he Well, he tells much. you not to trust the Haradrim. They're silly. Yeah. You know, that's there's a, a there's a flash of Diablo when he shows up, one. Yeah. Two, he shows you Tristram again for some reason. Oh, mm-hmm. what if it's Deckard Kane in dog form? Oh, hey, it could be. He, then he needs to sound like Deckard Kane. Oh, Even as a or, dog? We need to call him Doggard Kane. <laughs> <laughs> what? We need both these things. Doggard Kane to a dog. Call Everything me Doggard Kane. What? Sorry. Everything was perfect about cutscenes and all that. The only thing I hated was the Rathma Inarius holograms. Oh, I felt that that was that's the only ham handed thing where it's like, you know, you walk through a level and a little hologram appears and it's like, I'm the dungeon guy at the end of the dungeon. I'm here to tell you a li-. like it was Zoltan cool in, in mm. D3. Like, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. here to tell you about things. Skeleton King. Just, yeah. yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I But also they didn't do a good job. It's just like a green model. They didn't work on. I guess it's beta, but it doesn't look good. Blizzard to <laughs> make it look more ghosty. Like the Diablo three ghosts look better than Rathma does uh, in hologram form, to be quite honest. Yeah, I uh, but one small blemish. Yeah, but it, and that game. some of that could be not done. They said in their yeah, it could be not done. So yeah, holder possible. graphics and stuff. So this screen I'm holding up right here, not holding up, but putting up. Um, this is Lorath at a grave under what appears to be that big tree in Tristram. I think that's Deckard Cain's grave. I mean, it could be Tyrael's. Like revisiting would, it again because that's where they, they, they buried yeah, him. Yeah, where he buried him after the pyre burned. Yeah, he's going to dig him up and find he a personality besides Sad. Well, the only person Tristram is like we teleport there in the visionary woods. So the, doesn't he actually nowhere backs. near Tristram? I thought he was. Hold on. Oh, you think this is? Oh, this is from a trailer. Okay, yeah. it's not from the game. It's not from the game. This is a trailer that was like back at the. Was it at the BlizzCon or sometime shortly after they showed this? Maybe it was oh, BlizzCon. Okay. Yeah, maybe it could be. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, maybe I misspoke. So I don't actually have a, a very good uh, theory about how they'll do it, but I really think they'll do it, and I think at some point. Deckard Kane will pop out of something. And here's the problem. It'll be the voice and everything, and most players are going to be annoyed. John is going to be overjoyed. What I'm if? I'm be we... so happy. <laughs> and I'm every time someone's sad about it, it's going to make me a little happier. <laughs> yeah. What if we get the Haraja Cube and you just got to find one of Deckard Kane's sandals and like his tooth? <laughs> and then you poof, he appears out of the Haraja Cube. I'm in. It's just a sentient Haraja Cube. It's got yeah. a, it's a, a cube sitting on a sandal. Mm-hmm. Oh, that too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hello. Put items in me and I'll make them something great. <laughs> I picture it like the Tron central computing unit, uh, just a big face, you know, but a cube, but a face. And so you'd yeah, walk you up to this put big your items face. in there and he spits Hello. out new That butterfly oh. killed me and now I'm a cube. That would be a way I mean, to play. I have a feel- death for such an important character. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to see these characters and yeah. find out their fates. Uh, I just seem strange for them to leave that, but I don't. Hopefully they're going to tease us long enough. It's going to be a little while before we find yeah, that stuff. They're out. not going to poop. All I got high them. hopes. That first act, mm-hmm. like the cinematics were everything about the story. Like I'm hooked. Like I want to know what happens now. Yeah, like I'm when I in. started playing, I just wanted to play Diablo. I sort of had low expectations of the story. I wasn't super into three or even two for that matter. 
but this one's like got me kind of hooked. I want to, okay, what's going on with everybody? Where is this going? Like, mm -hmm. I want to know. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I, I think one of the interesting things for me about the story is that if you know the lore of Diablo, um, when Lilith shows up and she like starts talking to everybody, I kind of agree with Lilith. Like mm. it's well, different she's, she's when you're your in mom. the world and you don't know what's going but, on, but she shows up and she's like, Hey, all of you are just getting picked off by demons. You live in constant fear. And here you are praying to the high heavens who literally do not care about you. And in fact, have made you so weak that you can't even defend themselves. Why are you guys worrying about sinning? And I was like, she, yeah, she makes she makes points. a really good point. She makes some strong points. Stab that uh, preacher, man. Yeah, <laughs> stab him immediately. It's a good argument. It's a yeah, good well, argument. She's mom. Like you listen to mom. Mom knows best. Yeah, of course you do. She, I thought that scene was great. That scene really set the tone for a lot of things. But what it also did for me was uh, further cement the idea I have in my head that Blizzard worked really hard to make sure this engine was capable of letting me zoom way in on the detail. And then way out again to play the game, and I, I mean, think that that's a best huge looking thing. ARPG in history. Oh, right? without question. Point. Like anybody who doesn't yeah. think that is, I don't know what they're smoking. Yeah. Like it's yeah. crazy Look, good looking. Better than Path of Ag if you like the game's still grim dark, but if you still have an allergy to games that look good, even if they're grim dark, this game's not for you. It looks yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Fantastic. There are two things I would want. The, like the, the two things on my wish list for look. Because even though I, I know I was the big vocal, I don't like the look of this game. I thought everything looked washed out. Mm. Um, granted, we've only seen a snowy area where that's going to be less of a problem. But I have turned around on that. I think yeah. the game looked phenomenal. Yeah. I do think that um, it doesn't need to be washed out everywhere. Like it's I find it kind of strange and maybe it's just how they process it or whatever that like items that are supposed to be highlighted also seem washed out mm -hmm. i feel like the highlights of items and stuff could be a little bit brighter than they are like they kind of blend in in a weird way it's a bit of a nitpick but i'm like why can't we ha even have color there <laughs> why you can you can make it vibrant for a highlight that's the point of a highlight sure sure um and I uh i did i did run into some technical issues with the game with how it looks but um hopefully that gets fixed so i'm Technical running it on a 3090 and i had zero issues however like i said just the weird rubber bandy thing when you're trying to zone i, I assume all that's fixed when by we get by the servers. specs my computer should run this game at max setting yes yeah. i played it on medium and still ran into graphical hitches oh weird is it? So do you think it's I, a um, might be a driver thing? That could be a driver thing. They also released new drivers today. Nvidia did. Yeah, um, I just got this. that, and so I'm gonna be curious to see how it plays uh, this go around. But yeah, I had it on. I had it set on medium, and I still ran into things. And I, Bo had it on his stream. I, I literally saw it happen to him. But um, those that cut scenes, which I think are super cool, yeah. um, that they put your character in it your character will disappear at the transition between one scene to another. And I find it incredibly distracting. That and looked like beta bug. Maybe I'm just hypersensitive to it, but I saw it on many streams that I watched. Yeah. That um, happened to me too. I had it really bad when I first started playing, um, but then noticed it even on medium settings. So it's going to be, you know, there's a lot of, computer systems out there i found it a little frustrating because again on a technical level if i look at the specifications i should be able to play it at max and even playing it at medium i had some issues here and there mm. some of them were definitely server related things yeah but i noticed that too in the church scene there were a couple of just little glitch moments or like a texture would load in late or something like that yeah. and it made me think that there's time for them to polish that stuff up i hope I mean, it comes out in June, and I believe I'm correct when I say like optimization and things like that are one of the last things you do in game development. So yeah. I, well, I have months. hope that that's a lot better by the time it comes out. You know, I think, I it's think that just, probably will. I'm expecting it just to be stress testing for launch mm. because they gotta like ship it to Xbox and to PlayStation. That takes lead time and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, the console version like certified performed. for. I think at this point it's certified for launch. It's just waiting to, to hit its window. Probably the console versions reportedly ran really well. I didn't play it there. There um, could be a day of patch though. Like that, I guess that's yeah. the thing. Is like I think probably whatever's the launch title is done, but they can still. You know, it's going to be updated all the time. There could be a patch like you know, day of. Or you're something. also playing. You're you're definitely playing a a build that is not the final build though, because there's stuff 
blocked off. There are quests you can't go on. There's like, you know. I mean, they updated it today, so maybe I'm probably totally wrong, right? Well, I think there was some changes they were doing to something I thought I saw. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Well, but, it is beautiful. But, uh, graphically, like even though there was like misgivings or, you know, like stuff, I think overall on the on the balance of things, I had zero problems. Yeah. I heard there were memory leak issues, but I have 64 gigs. <laughs> I was like, it just probably leaked into the. Uh, the other memory the more gigs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that was fine uh, i had it running for like 10 hours straight at one point point. Yeah. and it's funny you know it sucks not getting in very easily on friday but we barely talked about that they resolved it quick enough that i think we all had a good time playing it but i just friday think was tough. yeah friday I was think, hard i think hanging on server issues is a, a bit of a silly point at, yeah, at this stage sure. it's gonna be the thing that is like you know do they fix technical issues? I don't know. How widespread are they? Are they just my system? Are they multiple people systems? I think there's a bit of a question there. There is zero question on if they will fix server issues. And as bad as Diablo 3 launched, it eventually got there. Mm -hmm. I have I have 100% faith that Blizzard will fix the server issues. Will it be we're all playing the night it comes out? Probably not. But you know it, it'll get there it'll yeah. get there one way or another mm -hmm. so i'm yeah. not i don't think it's a, a huge talking that's point more what this is about like I this, know it'll get done this beta is way more about that than anything else this is about them load testing and phase one was how do we do with a lot of people who bought chicken sandwiches and pre-orders how did that do okay yeah. pretty well we covered things up pretty good the first day and by the second day you could just get in it wasn't hard there weren't wait times and there were still everybody was having a good time so now do it where everybody has access. Even people who don't plan to buy and play the game can still get in if they want to. And let's see how we hold up that day, that weekend. That's what this weekend's about. It's way less about, you know, they're, they're, obviously they're going to be class a million, balances. A million, over a million accounts that first weekend, too. Yeah, That's it was a, a lot. lot of pre-orders. Yeah, it was a lot. So That's, we'll see. This game is going to do very, very well. Yeah. Like no matter what ratings, again, this is sort of the Diablo three thing. It's like no matter what ratings, at this point, it's poised to sell like crazy. Oh, I think it's going to review well. really well, and I think it will end up being this year's top selling game because, and the fact that it's that's cross platform from day one, and yeah. available on consoles day one, next gen consoles day one, and PC uh, plus cross platform, all these other ad advantages that it has this time around. I think this thing's poised to sell the most copies of anything this year. I can't think of another game that'll yeah. come close. And I want to, uh, so, you know, part of what we do, we don't really review games, but we do give our temperature on them. I know there's some people who are not interested in, or interested in what we have to say ranking wise. I am curious because I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of infuriating rankings and I want to give as part of the online discourse, I want to give my ranking just mm. to have it on the record. Give it. But um, yeah, this is game. This game is a 10 on 10. Ooh. This is a must buy. I don't think you're going to see a more quality ARPG and the taste we got is really good. It's mainly ranked because when I, I played for eight hours on stream, I told chat room I was going to bed. I logged off the stream. I took 30 minutes to do some other stuff and I came back and played for five more hours. Yeah. And That's... basically when I wasn't playing, I was thinking about playing and this entire week, all I can think about is wanting to play. I don't know how it gets any better than that. I don't know what the game has to do. Like it has to do like Dead Evil Arise and beat me off as well. Like that one tweet <laughs> was saying. Like, like I don't know what more you can ask for. Like sure, there's criticisms. Like we, let's have those. Yeah. But in terms of like, is it worth your money and time to play? Yeah. If you don't like RPGs, maybe not. It's not for everyone. But uh, if, for all their intents and purposes, it's worth your money to play the game. So ten. Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm giving it. My full endorsement and my full, uh, you know, don't miss out, play the game and enjoy it. There's also stuff we can't talk about yet because we don't know yet. Like, how does the Battle Pass behave and act and do? What does that feel like? What does their store look like? Like, none of this is in there. So all of those back-end issues, people concerned about what the end game looks like and how, how penny-pinchy it might be, or, you know, we don't know. We just freaking don't know. So some of that's going to yeah, have to Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's why, you know, I appreciate Bo's enthusiasm. I'm not there. I would say... I went from a, you know, not extremely excited place about Diablo 4 as I learned more about it to having a wonderful time playing the beta. I had a almost uniformly positive experience, and I would say that that has put me to cautiously optimistic for the game. Um, 
we haven't played all of it. We mm -hmm. don't know all the information. I don't think that it's a given that it's going to be perfect, but I can say my experience so far has been very, very good. My experience so far suggests a game that is not making me feel like I need to buy a battle pass for it, but I don't think that that's a statement I can feel good about making for myself until the game is out and I actually see it. So right, uh, right now, very positive on Diablo 4, but you know, this is... This is the first act of five. Yeah, and five end big game giant is acts. going to be a big deal. And I will tell you this. Um, it, the only part of my gameplay experience from this beta that was not good from purely a gameplay perspective mm. um, is the time that I made a new character um, to capture video for uh, for a video that I didn't put out. But right. um and I discovered that a lot of the random elements of the game are not random. And seeing the exact same dungeon and the exact same monsters and the exact same mechanics in the exact same places, while I didn't hate it, has made me a little concerned about what this game is going to be like when... Because Diablo is a series that you play through a bunch of times. Right. Like... How many times have we gone through Diablo 3? Like a, a ton, lot. yeah. Um, so in, in I, there is a theory, part of me that's yeah. concerned how fresh it feels each time you go through it, but that's an unknown. I don't know. Right. I was surprised that dungeons were literally the exact same from one playthrough to another, and keep, I find keep, that a little concerning. It's a little weird, but, but that also could be beta, you know? Like, they're just giving it you could be. repeated... It could, it could be. We don't know. know. Yeah, we don't know. There's like a hundred or something of like these side dungeons, too, but it, it that is like a, a concern in the community I can support. There's been a lot of vocal criticism about dungeon layouts. Like, yeah. the, like the game is like Lost Ark, overworld style. I could see it just being static because it's a multiplayer thing. They can't randomly generate your your overworld. I think I don't. I don't think. Yeah, but parts um, of it you can. I think outside of the because that's why they've got. Like that. I don't understand all the underlying tech, but right. my sense is it's going to be like Lost Ark. Like it's an MMO space, and it's probably going to stay fairly static. Um, at least that's what it looked like to me on the different characters I logged in as. But maybe it'll be different. This is just beta. Maybe we don't we're not seeing that yet. Yeah. But the um the dungeons should be random. That's private instance content for you and your friends or your party members. Right. So I, I John's right, like they're and I think overall the community's kinda right on the front that they need to put more effort into varying the dungeons. Because the random map generation is what keeps it fresh, like not knowing where the things are, so you don't just beeline straight to it. Like having to, you know, search and discover is part of the gameplay loop. Yeah, and they might have minimized on that side of things for sure. I, I agree. I, also... I just I just don't think the beta is an indicator of that, but I do think they should get out in front of it and say something about it, since there's a lot of talk about that. Like come out and say, it, like. What what gives me concern is that Blizzard hasn't answered come, that question. They did, they did come out. There was, I think, an interview. They did speak, and they just said, "Don't worry, there's lots more dungeons." Is pretty much the TLD. Okay. Of that. Well, so. yeah, but that doesn't necessarily <laughs> right. It, it didn't really. Yeah. Like, there's a lot to read into that potentially. So yes. I kind of have to just go off of what I saw, which was the same dungeons multiple times. Right. Yeah. And I think that honestly, it's even fine to do the same dungeon multiple times, maybe, but. If that's the case, then my criticism then shifts to, well, why don't they have the same spectacle as Lost Ark? Because I did feel like this game was lacking a little in spectacle because Lost Ark, I didn't like the game very much overall, but it is undeniable the amount of times that while playing that game, I went, holy shit. Like the the siege of the, the castle, siege the one cool, dungeon yeah. where you are being chased by a monster through the entire dungeon. Mm. Like some of that stuff was just incredible. I've never seen it in a game before and it just felt amazing. And I think that works because, you know, it's a set dungeon and you run it. Um, I'm willing to go, all right, well, we got rid of that, but we got rid of that in favor of randomness and a lot of variance and replayability. But if we don't have that, then I need something more than left clicking through the same halls over and over and over again. The, the, the unknown is the nightmare dungeons. All that content modified turns into nightmare dungeons. Mm -hmm. 
and we don't know like there might be a really good reason for them to stay static because of the kinds of challenges nightmare dungeons present kind of like i think mythic uh mythic dungeons in wow mm. you know so again we're haunted by the ghosts of the past where we have an expectation of what an apg looks like because of like d2r and path of exile and even yeah. diablo 3 right. i sort of get the sense that the system is going to be these are the dungeons you run through the main campaign with and then when you go to world class three or four and then you queue up nightmare dungeons it could be new monsters in there there could be new map mechanic like this we just don't know but i mean it's not wrong to have that sense based on what we know but mm -hmm. yeah yeah i know the response john wasn't very thrilling in terms of like don't worry there's more dungeons you're like you're not really addressing the criticism mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we're not asking for more we're asking for are they all like the same one that i was just in it's just, especially some because sometimes the second playthrough of a dungeon was not because i'm on a new character you know hundreds of hours later it was because i was like oh cool there's a dungeon right here i'm gonna do it and i go through it and i'm like yeah that was a good time and then i go 10 feet to the south and someone's like hero hero my son's a dick can you go kill him in that dungeon over there and you're like well shit i guess i'm running that dungeon again <laughs> let's go, let's go do it turns out i didn't kill this guy's kid yeah. gotta go deal with that now yeah. and uh then i'd be running it again literally minutes later so it is one of those things that i think is a, a valid concern it could be very easily you know shifted in a hundred different ways but i have to go off of what my experience was and my experience was the same dungeon over and over right there are a few things where uh, i did want to make sure we mention before we get off the topic of diablo for uh at least for now um and that is the the meeting in the middle i feel like the game is doing and i think it's doing it well but i wanted to at least bring this up a lot of people are upset console players are upset that their beloved roll move has been converted into a dash move that now has a cooldown and that also means the PC version also has the same dash move. I, for one, welcome it for a couple of reasons. The dash move or the roll move on consoles, and I talked about this on Kyle's show, uh, is not really anything. The, you all think it is, but it isn't. Uh, I've seen video that showed this. It's easy to find it. But basically, when you roll in the console versions of 3, you get to a point where you could have walked there just as quickly. It doesn't give you any speed <laughs> advantage. So, Does not increase your defense or something no, while you do it? No, none of it. It's just a flourish, and it lets you use that right stick for something. Um, that's all it ever uh, was, so it really didn't do anything for you in that game. Now, some may feel like it did. I'm not trying to take away from your experience. I'm just telling you, by the numbers, that was like a false sense of anything, and it didn't really do anything, which is probably good for the player base because they were saying, hey, there's a cool flourish for you, but don't worry, PC players. It's not giving them some weird advantage in the game. So... That's one thing. To make it an actual move and give it a cooldown, I think, is very tactical and interesting. And I like to be able to say, all right, well, while that's on cooldown, I'll use my wizard move. And while that's on cooldown, I got my dash back. So I've got these like mobile things. And that's a proper dash where I'm dashing faster than I could walk there, uh, run there. And it takes me to a place that I, that I get to quickly, which means I can dodge. I can use it for all sorts of mechanics. In yeah, gameplay. always get two charges, which is awesome. Yeah, which is great. And that's an awesome little touch, I thought. Another one that I really like is their meeting is halfway on this. Potions in the last game was a cooldown. You took them when your cooldown was up. And some you got some augments later that would have a faster one or a more fulfilling one or one that gave you a mana at the same time or whatever. But but you know, that 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 uh that thing that you would hit Q for to fill up your your health was on a cooldown, and that's how you did it. Otherwise, sometimes they would poop out red bulbs. You eat those, and those would help you survive as well. In this game, they, instead of going back to two and saying, well, make sure your inventory's full of a bunch of bottles of shit, which I hate, uh, they said, well, let's go in the middle and say you've got four of these to use, at least initially. Mm -hmm. um, meeting is halfway, you know? It's not a cooldown, so it's not this, like, little easy wow move, but also there are there's a limit. you got to be careful, and... Make sure you, you know, if you and see one on the ground. They got rid of health globes. So the health globes are the potions now. Right, well, basically, is, yeah. Yeah, they replaced in D3, it. it's like you had your potion cooldown, then you had health globes, which just instantly healed you, which was useless if you got it while you weren't hurt. Right. And if you happened to hoover it up, oops. 
<laughs> so it's nice that you can hoover them up and use them when you need them. So I find that they've struck a nice balance with the potion. I, I awesome. agree. I think it's the right number two. It feels pretty good to me. And then the other thing I really I like, like is playing I think... D2, there's actually a skill on Barbarian to get potions off people. Like, it's a thing. It, oh, that's cool. It. See, that's the is other it, thing is they know, can play with it and augment it and change it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is not like some new thing either. It's kind of remixed from D2. So. Yeah, exactly. So and then the other thing they did that I like is... Um, Oh, I like this skill system. It feels like old Diablo 2 and also doesn't yeah, the feel... the skill tree, you mean? Like yeah, the, the skill... How that's going? Yeah, because yeah, that's... I think it's fine. But that it's brings... Been, it's been a subject of discussion, you know, whether that's good or not. Even with John here, and that's why I wanted to bring it around to that, because John, initially, anyway, I don't know if you had a, any changes to, to your thinking here, but I think this is worth bringing up for players that are worried about gold sink or, you know, spending money on, on respec and stuff and... You had some pretty strong opinions last week. Do you? How do you feel about it now? No, it's still stupid that they have gold tied to it. It's <laughs> like it's not a big deal, but it it it's still dumb that it's there. Yeah. Like um, I I feel I feel confident that like most people like I I would probably I'm just gonna throw a number out like it's a fact. Um, even though it's not, I'm gonna say probably ninety percent of the player base probably will end up feeling like the amount of gold that's being asked for unless they do something crazy like where when you get really high up it's like not just gold but resources to respec mm -hmm. um but i i think the amount was never insurmountable there was one point in the game where i'd spent so much money on various activities that i wanted to do in town where i did not have enough money to respec i went out i killed things for a little bit i think i may have run a dungeon i came back i had enough money to fully respec mm -hmm. but it, it's not like it's an insane amount, but saying like, oh, it's okay, it's not that much money, isn't saying this is a great idea and a great system. It's just saying that like, it's, you know, it's like stepping on a tiny pebble. It didn't bother me that much. Mm. That's still a negative. Do you think um, there's... And I think in general, like, it's a negative decision. I think the game is designed, when you look at the way legendaries work, when you look at the way that... Uh, itemization is when you look at the way that the the systems are built it is it seems to be built in a way to encourage experimentation to encourage trying new builds to encourage going uh, well i got this really crazy new item and i would like to alter my build to match this item that i got it'll and try be 99 it please <laughs> and, and i think that i think that asking for gold to do that experimentation um, I do not think there's a purpose to that, except it, it, for a gold it'll, sink. And it'll be five ninety nine, please. Like, I, I, mean, <laughs> I hope not. Because they have the gold. The gold so far has been doled out very stingily. Hmm. I think having gold sink. I think John's onto something. There's gold sinks so that you're gold starved, so that you spend. You know, uh, buy a sack of gold. Buy a sack of ten million gold. Well, well I mean, we don't know that they're selling gold yet, right? Like, I we don't, don't know yet. Throw, but... <laughs> I don't want to throw too much accusatory around. But uh, know, here, here's here's the thing. I I think that just at the end of the day, it is counterintuitive to the system. And I, you know, transmog's free. You go to the inn and you switch your gear, how it looks around, and it doesn't cost anything. I think that if its sole purpose is a gold sink, there are other things in the game that I think would be a better gold sink. Maybe not better in terms of they get more gold out, but um, I just don't think they should charge for this. Like, it's not going to break the game. I'm not going to protest the game and not buy it because they charge for respec. I just think there's... There's no good reason to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of agree. Although as much as you know, you already said it, it's like not that bad, but why have it in the first place? Unless again, conspiratorial, cause we don't know, but unless there's a plan to say, well, we do sell a bunch of gold for four ninety nine. Yeah, Those Paragon boards aren't going to unparagon easily either. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Those look like for... complex things you're going to want to rejigger like 50 or 60 times as you figure out the optimal placement of your board nodes. Do you think that means they're not going to give us uh, that weird ring? You'll the get ring some of free grandeur? ones and probably earn some, but you're going to have to you're going to have to pony up some dollars. Yeah, but I mean for... like the the ring of grandeur that lets you have tons of money from everything. Those days are gone, do you think? I think it'll give us ring something of, like that. Ring of I world grandeur think... reduces your set bonus. Which one are you thinking of? Yeah, um, you're thinking of the thinking gem, gem that you slot into it that causes gold explosions. Oh, that's what everything. it is. The one I got from the fat gold guy in the chest. 
Yeah, the, yeah. it's what? a gem of the gem gold hoarder or something. Yeah. I can't remember yeah. exactly. I love that thing. gem of the horde or something. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I don't. I haven't seen. Have you seen any plus gold find? Maybe there was gold find. Oh, I didn't I notice. I now that you say that, I didn't, I didn't I, see it. On I didn't anything. notice any gold find, but I'm you know I'm playing D two R right now. And I'm like, there's tons of gold finds. So oh like, shit! I don't like that. That stat's not there. That makes me nervous. So, I, I'm my gut tells me they're actually going to try and make a Diablo game that doesn't have a ridiculous gold economy, mm. um, and that buying gold. I mean, it just makes sense. All these games have the buy a currency. I'm playing Mighty Doom. Wants me to buy. Shit oh, just I'm to playing get that guns. too. By the way, it's fun. I hate the. I hate. Yeah, the I mean, it's my stuff. mobile game. I hate it, but you know, I'll play it for thirty minutes while I'm taking a big shit before a big shower before a big core for three hour. <laughs> 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 but you know, yeah. it's it's it, it's it's really it's, good it nicely. But it makes the game that game makes me angry for the business practices it engages uh, in. No, but it's so annoying. Um, I still play it. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling. I just have a feeling. I mean, wow, you can buy gold, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I will say this. If they get to a place where they are selling gold, this goes from a little problem I have that's, you know, not that big of a deal. I don't like it, but it, it's not that big of a deal to a big deal. Like, I wonder me. if there'll be an auction house, too. They haven't said anything. But I wonder if there'll be some... some... It's like an in-game one, yeah, that you could then So throw it's not a real, real money, money auction house, but maybe... You can still AH some stuff and uh -huh. buy gold. And still put money it's in to get the literally gold. what they're doing in WoW. So it's not like a stretch to think, yeah. you know, something along those lines may be uh, in the pipeline. I the word has been that. that it is only cosmetics in the store. That is the drum they have beat. That is yeah. what I'm going to believe until I see otherwise. But we'll see. Yeah, if you're going to, um, if you're going to, I really would feel offended by this if, they made me, yeah. it made us all buy a $70 game and more if you're buying, you know, certain editions and then turn around and said, oh, and there's this XP boost you can pay for and there's this gold you can pay yeah, for. No, they can't do, well, the XP, unless they're really negligible, there's probably going to be negligible XP boost in the battle pass. Because mm. that's how the I think there's, works. I think there's race, XP right? boost so. for the battle pass. Mm. So it's not yeah. like character progression XP, but I would bet. I mean, you already have it. If you buy the most expensive version of the game, you get an accelerated battle pass. Like, you get levels for free. So yeah. my it, guess is that there are ways to speed that up, potentially. Yeah. It, it really depends what the race is. And Omega-9X is saying there's no AH, so fair enough. But um, it depends what the race is. If it's, like, milestone-based... Or if it's like XP based, because like I think it's going up to a level one hundred. Like there's that point where like it takes forever to gain a level just because it's you're getting your paragon points. But I think it goes to level one hundred. So I'm not sure if the leaderboard is going to be highest level or um, you know I don't think we're going to have a rift clear system. So I don't. I mean, there's still lots of unknowns. We can speculate. We got three months until we find out with exact knowledge what the plans are going to be for that but i just um, hope i just hope they there's retain... going to be there is a battle pass there are going to be items that are yeah. in the battle pass i have a feeling we're going to be not happy about something <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's you know i i have to imagine uh we're going to see something i don't know i got i got a feeling there's going to be a controversy but we'll see my main thing is if they how do we put this I, what I want is, as far as gold sink goes, I just don't want it to hinder experimentation because one of the funnest things about the rune system, some called it too simplistic, but I really liked it in three um, because it, it encouraged me to play around and find something that, that felt good to me. Forgetting about min-maxing and looking at other people's builds, just saying, well, what if I, my lightning was all blue and also jumped to everybody instead of just being straight across or whatever the thing was I was changing up. Oh, yeah. They, just they, changing I mean, it. Anything you know? they have in Path of Exile. Path of Exile has that. You can change your spell effects. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. what if you want your whirlwind to have clown cars instead of axes? And it's clown car. Like, oh, you can buy cosmetic for that. Yeah. Well, like, I don't mind. Um, that stuff's fine, but I'm just saying. Like, I think game, you can like, respec. I think you can pay money to respec and path as you can. well, I think. Yeah, you, you can. You can earn it in game, or I think there's a way to short circumvent it. Like, anything Lost Ark Path uh, is doing, why does Diablo have to be different? Now, I know we are, are all like, uh, we want them to be the bigger person and make the game we want, but like, they're like, you know, 
they're trying to open that customer net as wide as possible too, right? Like they're the they're arguably the gaming company with the highest like net worth. <laughs> like it needs to, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it, the revenue side needs to slam. So why would they not use some of their tactics? You know. So I just I'm expecting some. You can buy a. Some Deckard Kane skin, John, and that way you can experience Deckard Kane. Ah! <laughs> fastest money I would have ever given to Blizzard. If you can have me replace Lorath with Deckard Kane, yeah. voice you and pay, don't model, really you serious? I would they pay, pay it listening. I was starting to work on it right now, John. Twenty dollars. Uh. <laughs> I would pay the Blizzard premium for it a hundred percent. You know what? I might too, though. That's not uh, twenty bucks for that. That's this not is bad. what I mean, and uh, I like Blizzard employees. Rath, please stop listening now. Deckard Kane is universally better. The show's over. It's time. <laughs> please go watch that. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. Well, what this comes down to is now. You know, we're in the territory of stuff we don't know yet. We may learn a little more this weekend. Maybe something something else will show up in that client that we haven't seen yet. But. Boy, June can't come fast enough. Mostly because I just want to play Holy it. Holy crap. Yeah. But we'll they find just out. Made, they just made the next three months or two months the worst months of my life. Mm. Yeah. Well, we're waiting. <laughs> weren't we like, supposed thanks, to be playing? Guys. What was the other thing that we were supposed to be playing in June that's a big deal? I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares now? doesn't care. Yeah. I've, Final Fantasy I've got, 16. I've got plenty to play. It's no big Final deal Final Fantasy for me. 16. Oh, Final Fantasy. That's oh, right. Oh, is it? That well, that's another big release, but the big thing is the end of summer. August is Baldur's Gate. That's fine. Oh, that's BG3, good. yeah. I got plenty of space between Diablo 4 and Baldur's Gate 3. It's good. I'm good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I can't think of anything else. I think the oh, Space Marine, whenever that thing's dropping. Oh, shit. Deep. Yeah, I'll stop what I'm doing for one. that. And Dead Space was the other one, and we had that, yeah. and that was great. It was great. Um, but I'm not I like... got plenty of new releases to hold me over. I got one literally tonight, so it's nice. going to be an easy peasy wait. Unlike Bo, I'm not going to have to worry about uh, a- accidents happening that will deny me my grand and glorious Diablo 4 future. I, I've got stuff to live for today. Wait, what are you living for today? <laughs> yeah, what are you playing There's today? There's an Evil 4 remake. Oh, is that tonight? Tonight. Oh. Well, tonight. Midnight for some, 9 a.m. here. I have to bring something up here, about so. that real quick. I was going to do it later, but I'll do it now real quick. Um, a fan, uh, Badger Lord, listener to the show, heard that I... Um, would only uh, once again i'm only playing these scary games that people give me copies say about that what you want but that's how the rule is and he did it so the question is because john's super into that game he's going to play it regardless yeah do we I'm want to play with you do we want this like. to be one of those where, where wherever you're at in your own playthrough do you want to be on the streams i do of that game as yeah, the tradition you'll has have dictated. me i'll do it my wife said she will make it work when whenever she's she said you and scott have fun and it's okay. good. All right. If you guys are down, said, meaning you and her. out of time. And then, let's do it. All right. Are you guys able to play like at the same time where you stream each other your feeds on Discord and then also stream it? Oh, but then he'll get. Where, he'll be like, better than me. It's like cooperative me. playing, you know? Like, yeah, but he'll be better than me and get further and he doesn't get scared and he'll kill well, me. He'll wait for you. He's so <laughs> he kind. Doesn't. He's so nice. He won't get scared, but you know. I won't. like playing ahead of Scott because I feel like it helps me keep him on task. That's true because oh, you know what's okay. coming. So that when he gets worried and is like, I don't want to go through this door, I, it's fine. Don't yeah. worry about it, Scott. So and then something terrible happens. I'm like, yeah, I was messing with you that time. So thanks, for, thanks, Badger Lord, because soon, soon that now will be a reality. I have it on Steam. It's ready to rock. I didn't know that was tonight, though. I thought that was like, I don't know when I thought it was. Next week, I thought. Yeah, it's no, it's tomorrow. Well, you don't need to play it this weekend because <laughs> there's a Diablo Four open beta. <laughs> yeah, game, I was so. gonna say. Well, but while John is uh, um, playing, you know, getting ahead so that he's not having to do it at the same time I'm doing it, that big thing above Bo's head, that's what I'll probably no, be No, John's going to play Diablo this weekend, too. You got, uh, I'm so, going to do both, yeah. Yeah, yeah. do both. Are you play playing Druid. Necro or, do you, or Druid? You can play Druid? I'm going to play Druid. Uh, Druid awesome. is what I played when the Diablo 2 expansion came out. Mm. Um, that was my primary class right out of the gate. And uh, I really liked it, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious if I will still be able to make great big burning balls of fire uh, roll across the map and kill things. That's, those those were cool. That's what I did. That was my build yeah. for my druid. It was just I put all my points in big balls of fire, and that's what that's how I killed everything. And yeah. it was amazing, and yeah. I want to do the same. That's fantastic. I'll bet you'll have something similar to that. But I, I'm looking forward to both those classes because they're the weird ones, and I like the weird ones. 
and I'll play, I'll play both because I, I don't know which way I want to go. I loved them both back in two, and I love three's Necro. Necro's great. So uh, I don't know how different it'll be here. I do love the blood effects that I'm seeing in graphical stuff, like a Necro rolling a wave of blood down a hallway. It looks badass as hell. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. That's tomorrow. Yeah. Woohoo, everybody. Woohoo. All right. Enough about Diablo 4 for the moment. We got a quick uh, Patreon question to answer here. This is mostly for Bo, but we can all answer it. Uh, Dalegan Mins- Misner says, uh, what TV sh- <laughs> Who? What? Uh, it's a weird name. Dalegan da- Min- Misner. Deegan. No, Dagan. 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 Dagan Misner. I'd see Dagan. No. Misner. No. Dagan Misner. You You're just it? adding an L in there because you want to. Did I say <laughs> Dalegan? Did I? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's, we went Dalegan Nagomazizer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he says, what TV show do you think would make a good VR game? Bo, answer this question. What TV oh, show? Oh, shit. What TV show? I mean, a lot. Yeah, would you say uh, uh, like... Uh, uh, Trailer Park Boys <laughs> VR would be amazing. <laughs> It'd be a chore core uh, game. I'd have to clean up the park. I mean, I play a community TV show. Um, Could I be Randy <laughs> in a, in a chore core game and like have a giant belly out in front of me and... Go yeah, yeah, you look there. You like there's your belly. Yeah, fix the sprinkler. I can do that. That's the job. Yeah. You got to get a cheeseburger. Okay, that's that's how and, I sustain uh, myself. You got to get a cheeseburger, and you don't have a lot of money, so you you got to go back to uh, how, what do they call it in that show? Like Horan or Turn and Trick? Oh, I don't want to do that version of Randy. I want to clean sprinkler heads and shit. I don't want to go gotta to town. suck off dudes in a pickup truck <laughs> and to get fifteen dollars for cheeseburgers. <laughs> Uh, that's literally that's literally randy's character here he here, here i was and then he goes and has here listen he has, here here he i was coming in today's show cheeseburgers i came into today's show going oh bo will say mandalorian or something i was sure of it like it'd be your first answer nope we're going trailer park boys get in get in everybody it's gonna i mean great. i feel like there's already star wars games but there's no there's not a real good trailer park boys game yet. <laughs> You know, well, there's that mobile game. You played that for a bit, didn't you? The Wii. Good, game. good, good. There's no good trailer. <laughs> it's not yeah, a good let me game. clarify. We mean quality. That's, that's yeah. just that's literally a, a, a robbery in progress. Yeah, fair point. Basically, um, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for this. Like a, like a, like a show. Like, I most... say Freakazoid. What's Freakazoid? What is that? It's an old cartoon show on the WB. Freakazoid. Oh, what about what we do in the shadows? You can play as Jackie Daytona. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York. From New York City. City. <laughs> City. City. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, you get turned on by everything. And that's, it's pretty much the same game as the Trailer Park Boys game. Oh, Freakazoid. <laughs> I remember Park. Freakazoid now. Okay. You have to make my pornography. Yeah. <laughs> I once got arrested for it. What is he, John? And, and the one who's a totally normal human bartender or whatever it was? What's that's that? Jack, yeah. Jackie Daytona. Totally Jackie normal Daytona. human bartender. So good. Yeah, I. I he uh, wears blue jeans, you see. Yeah, there's Freakazoid, by the way, everybody. That's what he looks like. I remember this now. Okay. That could be fu- I'm fun. I, mean, I don't, I, I don't yeah, know what the gameplay TV, would be. TV show. It is entirely like this joke. I am curious. It, it, send an email if my saying Freakazoid is an answer landed for you. It is an insanely meta joke, and I will just explain it. It's not funny, but we've commonly talked about my only VR experience being the game Dactyl Nightmare. Mm-hmm. There's an episode of Freakazoid where they play Dactyl Nightmare in oh, VR. Oh, that is a deep that cut. Is the, that is the cut. That is the joke. That's it. Wow. I like it. Write it you down. You have to have knowledge about a old WB children's animated program, and you have to have heard enough core to know that I've played Dactyl Nightmare. So that's it. Get ready, 90s kids. Your test will be soon. <laughs> this was a joke just for you. Yep, it's for you. Um, I don't have a good answer. Uh, but you know what? Breaking Bad. I want to I want to make meth. Again, it's a it's yeah, a it's yeah, a chore like core it. game. I want to have a meth lab. I want to try to It's like a meth cooking simulator. It takes mm-hmm. place underneath that laundromat yep. and you just got to go in, kill a fly once in a while on the guards. Yep. Teaches Oof. you a skill, you know? Yep. Every once in a while there's a fly, you got to kill it. Uh, you're like, the new apprentice jesse's like being kept busy so you're helping walter yeah and so every once in a while competent so you got to earn his favor every once in a while Giancarlo esposito shows up and just says you know checks on your work make sure you're getting shit done and you got to give him numbers and i could do that that'd be fun i'd play that john do you have a show you already said freakazoid and bo said the other thing 
<laughs> trailer park boys. <laughs> trailer park boys. <laughs> oh my lord! All right. Uh, if you want to be have one of your questions featured here, you have to be a patron, and you will be notified on Patreon when we get new questions. So watch for those coming soon. <laughs> We talked about Diablo in uh, length, so we're going to jump to all the other stuff we played this week. I went on a factory hunt this week when I couldn't play Diablo. I was playing these games. This That thing happened to me that happens to me where I get so into a little genre that I'm like, wait a minute, I want to try them all. And so I did. I played a ton of the following games. Factory Town, Factorio, Mindustry, and Satisfactory. The thing they all have in common, automation factories building uh systems of uh production so that i can win the game these are what these you play these... some dyson too i saw dyson Twitch oh did i not week. put that on here yeah of course dyson sphere yeah. in fact You're i played more of that than any help yeah more dyson sphere than anything i don't know why i left it on my list that's weird um actually and that's funny because that's the one i think is the best um yeah dyson sphere number one it's great it's a really i mean i knew this already but i was kind of bad i'm still bad at it and i played it streamed it. a bunch of smarties came in and helped me with a bunch of stuff um just to i'm kind glad of... they were nice sometimes they're <laughs> oh yeah. yeah sometimes those games when they're like don't you know you could be more efficient doing this stuff you feel like a complete moron yeah i usually don't like streaming really nice. those games for that reason because I'm, I'm really yeah. exposing myself but these guys were they were really nice that night um, and some of them shared some screenshots on our Discord and said, here's my layout. And some of them are crazy. I didn't know about finding tidal locked planets so you could like have as much exposure to solar energy as mm. possible and have it never go dark. And what then, then how you tie that to your other planets and get your production up and all this stuff. And uh, it's way above my head so far. Like I'm, I'm still first planet. It's to... a whole like thing that you got to take in piecemeal and learn, mm -hmm. you know, like, cause like there's interstellar logistics stations where you get the drones flying back and forth, but to go to another system, you need warpers. Those are, I have a whole system devoted to making those warpers, right? So they can feed the rest of my interstellar logistics stations. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's not like, oh, you're going to build a couple of them. You're going to want hundreds of everything and just yeah. like make a giant network of bullshit also, you can harness the energy of a sun from a Dyson sphere. Yeah, awesome. which is insane. And I'm nowhere near any of that. But I I just think of these. Okay, so here's what I'm... This, since we've talked about all these games at some length, I'm not going to get into all of them again. But I am going to say this. The reason I think Dyson sphere comes out on top, uh, it's the most intimidating in the end game. I feel like wherever I'm headed is, is a little scary. So I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about that. But early to mid game, it's the most satisfying of these games. It, it it's it lets you do things right away that are fun to do no tech tree no not really no, there, sorry there is actually there is but it's there not is the same tray, yeah but what you're doing in the map is literally affecting the tech tree. correct like, correct it's not just a side thing it's like it's gating you it's like your entire purpose is exactly and so you can kind of choose it what feels like the game it, it yeah. lets you choose what you want to do first so you can kind of haul ass on a certain uh, aspect of it but i just feel like immediately i'm building shit and it's i've got conveyor belts right away and i've got these smelters working right away and it's it's fun from the get-go and because you can't really lose, you can tear shit down all the time and, and rethink it and go, all right, let me think here. I'm going to tear this whole section down and reset it up, and it's not a problem. All the inventory is still there. You don't lose a bunch of money. You just make it again and do better this time. And I think it, it's, a, it's a better game for letting me be a little more mistake ready or, or ready it's, to correct my mistakes it's a sandbox or like a construction kit you know like minecraft mm -hmm. if you play it a non you know you just build you just build shit yeah it feels like a science toy like you know to go to the museum mm -hmm. and you get like the science pack that shows you how to make a volcano or constructor kit that shows you how to do some weird abstract mechanical thing but you're screwing things in with nuts and bolts mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. it feels like a, a game like that where it's like here's how fact space factory operations work like have fun yeah and if you screw yeah. up it's yeah. okay don't be too hard on yourself and if you don't think your layouts are awesome or you got too much spaghetti uh all over the place then either redo it or don't worry about it it's it's okay just learn have fun and the game the little, is really good at that. I love that about it. 
the little square nodes of the resources are all labeled in different color and they're adorable. Mm-hmm. Like see all the little boxes going in or the video you're showing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just love looking at those little box nodes. They're adorable. I'm just like, oh, they're like little bits of copper and yeah. and uh, sulfur and whatever else, you know. It's I also a like great just, little system. I like the powering systems right off the bat too. Like uh, it's Factorio. I also really like Factorio. I would put this put that in second. But Factorio's, you know, I need coal to run these stupid uh, – these these drills at first and that's a pain electrical doesn't come till later you have electrical immediately you put up wind wind uh, generating electrical things and you can extend those with towers and you're just in dyson sphere just into it very quickly and i think that wins a lot of people over for that early game it's not like simple there's a lot to learn um it doesn't really hold your hand but once you get the basics of it it's very hard to put down that game's rad I love it. So I'm going to keep hacking away at that, and um, it's become my kind of go-to right now. I think about it a lot, and I want to play it. I dreamt about it last night. So oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I'm nowhere near where Bo. Bo you're is so this, this is this your video? No, this is somebody this, else. Okay, it's, it's so I'm like seeing through. one of the tough things is like when you, I don't really like to do multi-item conveyor belts because mm-hmm. if you get backed up, it can jam up your belts. Yeah, I like I'm very tier. like OCD about one one. One product, one belt. Yep, same. <laughs> same. I don't like – even though there's lots of tools to mix and sort with the belts, I end up screwing it up all the time. So one belt, one product uh, because it can cause jams if you're trying to pull in a product into a facility that doesn't accept it. So Yeah, and I will say – uh, uh, of You know, graphically also and sort of performance-wise and everything, this game's kind of amazing in that regard. Um, At the high end, there's 64 – you can have up to 64 – like planetary system like solar systems mm-hmm. and on all those planets you in theory can have factories covering all those entire like you know 64 times an average of four you know a couple of hundred planets in your game simulation running factories all, at all the through, same like, time. Like, it's crazy and there's a there's a page where it shows you your cpu and gpu uh usage because i think the game will eventually let you destroy your computer mm. <laughs> with like, I, th- I think there's a limit break on on like just how much you can actually install uh, and have running in the simulation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I haven't gotten there, and uh, enemies are coming. There's a big update. Yeah, that combat for Cam- combat's the combat. coming. I hope they don't make it mandatory because it's not my favorite thing about these games. I always turn it off. I'm sure they won't. Yeah. I'm sure it won't be mandatory. Um, but I I spent just a ton of time in all these games, and they're all good. They're all good, uh, satisfactory. If you like first person, that's basically Factorio first person mode. Um, Factory Town is a little more simplified. It has some town elements, but is basically one of these games. Uh, Mindustry is interesting because it's like a, uh, it, uh, it's hard to explain. Everything's just very simple looking, but that one's overwhelmingly uh, positive on Steam, and I thought, well, it's like five bucks on sale. I'll try it, and it's cool. It's it's a fun one of these, but I just kept getting pulled back to Dyson Sphere. There's some special sauce in that game. Um, yeah, there's something kind of like it's kind of just one of those things that seems to be getting like I could never make this game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It'd be too boring. Yeah. Same. But the, you know the people who like it really like the game they're making and they're making it fun, you know? I'm just like, but I can never make this game, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, no, like, it's oh. a great point. And it is, that's the ticket, is it's very fun to just get logistical and screw up and then change it and then say, oh my gosh, look how efficient my 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 um, my iron mining is going and where it's all being sent and how that's being efficiently converted into the parts I need and stored properly and you know, finding out I could stack storage uh, and containers for an blew early my access mind. Game too. Um, never encountered a single bug in almost two hundred hours of playing. Yeah, this game it basically for feels early done. access. Like yeah. it's as stable as stable gets. Dude. It's redonkulous. Yeah. It's still not going to be for everyone. These kinds of games maybe are a certain taste or whatever, but it's a taste I have at the moment, and I kind of can't get enough. So anyway, bunch of that. Loved it. Great stuff. I only started or I started streaming a game called Bokura. With my daughter, Bokura. Um, what is Bokura. that? I saw I saw your tweet, but I meant to check it out, but I didn't. Um, it's up on YouTube now. At least our playthrough so far. We're gonna keep playing. Oh, there's me and her. Um, this game is really weird and cool. So, the way it starts out, you're on a bus, and she's on her computer. I'm downstairs. So we're playing this multiplayer co-op, 
and you see the same world at first. And then later something happens. I don't want to spoil it because I think people should experiment with it. But uh, you now have the exact same layouts roughly, but you're different creatures. She sees a beautiful uh, forest area with like animals and trees and stuff. And I see a burned out, horrible robot hellscape. But we're in the same proximity of each other. And her, what she sees on screen is what she sees. What I see is what I see. So the way we did this is we would... Uh, for a huge part of the gameplay, I split the screens up so you could see the difference. Was and this? A, I gotta ask real quick. Was this a choice as far as who sees what? Because it feels like it fits your personalities I, to a degree. It does. Uh, I we didn't know when we chose which one we were going to be. So okay, but it's perfect because Carter's the cute little animal zone, and I am the weird robot zone. Um, even though the way I laid it out here is a little weird. I, I put me under mine and her on top of hers. Okay, but. so wait. Maybe it's just not clicking to like You're in two different game worlds, but connected? The exact same. So notice how that, if you're looking at the video right now, you yeah, notice how we're in the same, same place. Yeah, not Like, obviously, it's a different tile set. And yeah, you know. exactly. So you're moving and talking in real time. You're still seeing the dialogue with each other, but you're not... You, what I visually see is totally what, not, what Carter... She doesn't see it. She sees this this uh -huh. forest. And where it gets crazy, at first that's just like, oh, okay, I guess we just co-op through this and that, and my end looks different. Okay, fine, whatever. But then as you go, there are things that I see that she just doesn't have. Like Yeah, uh, so in your world, there's two little robot uh, dongles following Carter, mm -hmm. but I don't see that in Carter's game. Yeah, if you look at Carter's game, you will see, where am I? Oh, I'm the bear. Later on, I will get a couple of little hover things, but they're not quite the same. Those will act as stand-ins for invisible stuff for one of us that can't see it, but they'll help us stand on an invisible place that I have to encourage her. I'll say, Carter, don't worry. Just off of that cliff is a, is a pot platform. You'll be fine. But to her, it looks like she's going to fall to her death. So she has to, like, Indiana Jones take this, the pen, oh, pen man right now pass. you're pressing buttons to help her. Yeah, or I'm telling her yes. what to do, and because we had to be on comms to do this, there's no way it would work otherwise. And it seems um, to be the idea that this game is designed for you to communicate and work together. Yeah, exactly. And you it, can't see what the other player is seeing. It's so fun. We had such a blast playing this. Um, we're gonna actually keep looks going. really neat. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that about this game. I, it's that's a pretty unique. Uh, yeah. See, like on her end, she pushed a chain down to me. On my end, I hovered up on an invisible platform that I couldn't see. So I had to take her word for it, and it, and it was dangerous. Mm. Uh, this is happening here, where she looks like she's on oh, land. Oh, wild. Yeah, yeah, isn't that weird? And that and so we have to... I couldn't see what she's doing. She can't see what I'm doing. But we had to like say, all right, trust me, there's a platform there. Take that, and it'll, it'll let you go down, but you need to be standing on a switch. And the switch we both see, but they look different, obviously. It's And um. then sometimes you get totally separated. So... To her, I now look like I've gone underground somehow, and now I can come out of it again. But she doesn't know what all that's about, and she can just walk over it because her little robots are carrying her over. It's a really weird concept, dude. Oh, it I think it's that's super rad, actually. Yeah. Pe people said uh, it reminds them of It Takes Two, which we haven't played yet. I kind of want to from last was it last year or year before. Yeah, I think it's last year. Similar, uh, similar stuff, although I think you can do a lot of it on the same screen in that game's case, so I don't know if it's the same. But you die and you start right where you were, so there's a lot of sort of super meat. Oh, you, can't, you cannot take much of a fall in this game. No, no. And it's, it's kinda, very realistic. It's kind of dark. And, <laughs> yeah, I fell out of my chair once. It was, uh, it was. I thought it was the end of the world. In some ways, it's cutesy. In some ways, it's dark and weird and, and twisted, and the dialogue's really weird, and... I don't know. There's a whole premise about why you're out there in the first place, and you're kids. So if you die, oh, and you were, and this whole thing started because you you both play Pokemon together, except it's called Pacamon because they don't want to get sued. <laughs> um, it, so it's got all that kind of stuff. Anyway, it's really cool. We're gonna play the whole thing. I hear the ending's not amazing, but whatever. The journey's really fun so far, so we're gonna keep playing it. And uh, I quite like it. Oh, I forgot the most important thing. If one of you or you you get together and you buy this with a friend. Only one of you needs to own it because they just go to Steam oh. and download a client that is free to them that lets them play the second character. Oh, what? cool. That's really that, nice, Isn't too. that cool? Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. So anyway, I know some hmm. other games will do that, but it's a really neat little thing. That's it was Carter's idea, yeah, and I've really been enjoying it. So 
Check it out. That's Bokura, B-O-K-U-R-A, available on uh, Steam and I think maybe Switch, maybe somewhere else. Not sure. John, tell me about The Last Spell. I don't know what this is. Uh, let me tell you about The Last Spell. Last Spell is a very cool game. It's like um, Into the Breach mixed with uh, Darkest Dungeon mm-hmm. mixed with, I don't know, some roguelike uh, tactics type game. It's really hard to to describe exactly what it is, but um, basically the premise is you are uh, protecting a town that at night monsters come. It is a turn-based strategy game, so it is not real time. Um, but at night, monsters come to attack the town. You are trying to allow a uh, spell to be cast that takes a long period of time to cast um, that is going to remove all magic from the world. It actually is kind of stealing an idea from a D&D campaign. Not stealing. Uh, but I had a very similar idea for a D&D campaign to this game. It's kind of wild to find out. And uh, you have to defend it during the night and then build up defenses, equip your uh, allies with new gear, um, heal, do all the usual stuff during the day, and you have limited resources to do it. And this is a really, really cool uh, game uh, from what I've played. I haven't put a ton of time into it. Most of my gameplay this week went to Diablo 4. Um, but the little bit I got to play on this, I can see me sticking with this for a long time. Uh, really? So you've this got a awesome. squad of like look. three odd, people. The... Yeah. Uh, they all have different classes. Their classes allow them to do different things based on the weapons that they have equipped. And you have limited resources because like a campaign is one casting of this spell. So you have to you can go out and cast all your most powerful spells uh, or abilities as your character over and over again. But when it shifts to daytime, you don't regain all your health and mana. You regain a portion of your health and mana. Mm. So there is this dance of like, yeah, I can send my warrior in to just sort of tank all these mobs and uh, they can survive, but they're only going to receive a little bit of, uh, of health back when the the new night cycle starts again so is it going to be worth it am i going to be able to keep this war of attrition up against these hordes and so you have to think very tactically you have to try and you know protect your town because you can add new features to your town that will give you more health or more mana back each night or even just defensive structures but monsters attacking your defenses will also induce panic which limits your rewards that you get for it so it's this like constant push and pull of like i want to prevent as many monsters from getting into town as possible but i also have to play cautiously and i can't just run out and attack everything and uh it's all presented in the form of a a tactical game with uh, i mean it looks like if somebody said this is what the end of the breach people did next it's believable it looks Mm a lot like into the breach interesting um does not have the same mechanics it's not a lot of like pushing and throwing and stuff like that but it visually it's what it always reminds me of so Uh, there's uh, a review here that says cool game review says that it's let's see let me read it here says the closest thing i can think to describe this as uh the last bell is a turn-based version of they are billions which is something bo is playing recently yeah Um, yeah it's kind of like it's kind of like that too you know it hits that nighttime cycle and here they come and it's you're gonna have to get through the the hordes and make sure that your defenses are good enough um right now i like it a lot from a tactical gameplay perspective um i don't like the base building aspect quite as much Mm. i think that's probably the thing that i'm having the hardest time with is that i i don't love all the aspects of the game equally and mm. so when the new day starts and they're like, hey, what do you want to do today? Do you want to work on buildings? I'm like, eh, I don't really want to do that. I, would, I kind of just want to get to another fight, uh, which is OK right now. But by the time you're on night four or five, you're like, boy, I really wish I had built some buildings while I had the chance. I should have used it. So uh, it's cool. It's a it's a cool game. Um, I haven't, again, put it too much time into it i went through the tutorial i went through the first couple nights of 
the actual main campaign. It does have roguelike elements where you are unlocking uh, perks that will carry on into future runs. So you will have more health uh, if you upgrade it or more mana. So you will eventually get there. Um, you might have a couple failed runs before before you do, but uh, super, super fun. This game is right up my alley. This looks uh, up my like alley, this. too. This looks awesome. I didn't even know this was a thing. Uh, let's see. just came out, too, right? March sometime. Yeah, March 9th. Yeah. Newish game. It's been an early access. I've had my eye on it for a while, and then I'm always like, mm, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, like, I'm glad you tried it because you've made it be more interested. In yeah, it looks cool. 24 bucks right now. Not bad. Yeah, I got it on sale during the uh, the, <clears throat> the sale that just ended um, for about half off. So. Oh, that's great. Uh, I'm sorry you can't all do that. <laughs> it's now full price, but uh, yeah, it's it's a cool game. Very awesome. Cool game. The last spell, everybody. Go check it out. Bo, what is D2R? Dance 2 Revolution. Diablo, Diablo 2 Resurrected. <laughs> oh, oh, duh. So, I knew so, this. <laughs> Listen, I bought D2R a while ago, and when I logged in, I was like, oh, this control's kind of bad. Maybe I'll play some other time. I think it was like two months ago. I was looking for an ARPG to play, and I bought it. Yeah. And then, um, well, uh, then I played Diablo 3 this new season. And so, you know, then Diablo 4 beta started, and then it's ended, and I was depressed. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should play some more Diablo. <laughs> and what's kind of interesting, uh, even more so, is that now that I've had a taste of Diablo 4, I can play comparison. Because, you know, we didn't talk too much about it, and I don't think we should. But, you know, it's hard for that uh, the, D the Diablo 2 derangement sets in whenever a new Diablo game comes out. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know, I was like, is it? So I wanted to compare. I was just like, I was just interested to see the differences. How much is it really like it? Because in some ways, I think Diablo 4 has copied Diablo 3. It will end up feeling more like Diablo 3 than Diablo 2, probably. Could be wrong. Mm. But um, so I got in and just played a little bit. And I got and I was like, oh, the controls are kind of bad. But then I realized, I for, had forgotten this, but you can set up like 12 hotbar keys. Remember how when I was playing Lost Ark, I was like, you know, I want eight button Diablo. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing here. I could just do that. Like, I, heard, I heard you on your and, Diablo Four stream say at one point you exclaimed, "Give me eight buttons!" You said out loud. Yes, yeah, yeah, I know. I, yeah, I mean, if I had one criticism, it's like six buttons. Come on, come yeah. on, give me eight. Let me just have as many buttons as I want. Yeah, let me play my way, man. Yeah. But um, <laughs> as it turns out, Diablo Two Resurrected is a great. Uh, <laughs> substitute for Diablo 4 uh, withdrawal syndrome that I'm experiencing. Yeah. Uh it's pretty the actual resurrected part I I think very few remasters or remakes do this where they do the they've literally built the same game on top of the old game because you can just toggle back and forth between old school graphics. Right. I think Warcraft 3 does this too, right? I think you can do that in Warcraft 3 as well. Um, well, hold on. Is that a thing? Oh, I know um, I don't know if you have to switch it off in the menu but Halo in One Diablo, did you do this? That Halo One remake did? That yeah, was pretty cool. Halo yeah. did it. I know that's for right. Sure. That's yeah. right. It's pretty neat because man, does Diablo Two look terrible in the original? <laughs> yeah, dude. Like on on an LCD screen, yeah. it is it is an eyesore. I mean, maybe on a CRT monitor, I think it wouldn't be as bad, but on an LCD, it's <laughs> ooh, it's awful. It really is. But that's, you know, yeah. actually, having played it for a little bit, the remaster is like pretty dang good. Uh, like. Like they, the fact like that they didn't improve it, you know, you might say like, well, why couldn't they have modernized it? And I'm like, actually, it still plays pretty good for a true to the source kind of style game. And graphically, so it is. It. It's really impressive, I think, graphically, like lighting effects. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff. But, you know, like it's still like it's still it's still like look at the skeletons moving around. Right. Yeah. You tell me Diablo 4 is not going to look like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Like they preserve the jank, as, <laughs> even though the graphics are better. Yeah, and I think it's better for it. Like it's it, it's a nice way to experience gaming history, but not have to endure the the awful. I think the highest resolution you can play the original game in is eight hundred by sixty or something like that. Like it's not good. Um, I'm having fun. I'm in Act Two. I'm a level twenty Amazon. I played a bit of Barb as well, and it's been a great. It's been great. It's been a really long time. I haven't played this since I was playing games on CRT monitors. Mm. So, you know, it's been a while. Yeah. And um, 
and uh, I'm having a good time. I mean, it's a we all know this game. There isn't much to say other than I actually think it's pretty solid. Uh, it's a pretty solid remaster, and it's the game I is still to, fun. Mm-hmm. I have to confess, I also reinstalled Diablo Two Remaster. Did you really? After after nice. they took the beta from me, I was like, well, yeah. at least yeah. I have this. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I have to. Play I have to Diablo also... three. I played so much. There's like no way yeah. I'm playing Diablo three. I, I also have to confess, I already had it installed. <laughs> nice. Did you play it as well? No, it I never didn't. Left. I didn't play it. It never left though. I already had it. But I, I do like it, and I respect it, and I think it's the classic everyone thinks it is. Um, there are some problems though. Like when I play it, I immediately go, "Oh, that's right. There is no respect in this. So I got to be really careful what I choose." You get three respects. Do you? The old game did. Yes, it? there's a quest uh, for clearing the den of evil, like the first quest. I think. Yeah, you get one from Akara, a respec. Oh. You only get three, but you, and that's for completing the game three times over. But you will get a respec, which you don't have to cash in right away. Right, I can you hang can on save to. It. It. Yeah. And then there's an item you can get that will give you respecs as well. But to- you forget a, just how many slots. Torment. You forget how many slots freaking identify scrolls and teleport scrolls and like some of these older ideas yeah. and those charms. The charms are I'm as big wondering... as a freaking skateboard. Why are those charms so big? Huge. Yeah, there's... Take well, up can... inventory spot. Just yeah. sell them. Just sell them. You don't pick up everything in this game. Like, you know, it's you leave shit on the ground and just pick up what you need. Um, there's books that you can store portals and identify scrolls in. Yeah, that's right. And, and, um, I don't know, like there's definitely some jank, like getting used to stamina took a bit of time. Yeah. So oh, right. you have to, you only go at walk speed for a while. You got to bring some stam potions. I kind of appreciate their commitment to the RPG side of things, right? Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of emphasis on the A part of ARPGs in 2023, but you know, they were trying to make it seem like you were an adventure journeying and it was challenging and you have stamina potions, mm-hmm. you know, like, or st- you get frozen and you need an antifreeze potion to unfreeze yourself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's little things like that. Not very many. It's still very actiony and great, but, and man, the potion system, now that I'm spoiled on Diablo three and four. Like, I have to refill that damn belt all the goddamn time. Like, <laughs> yep. I'm just like, oh, my God, I went through four potions already. Time to like, yeah. refill the belt. Yeah. It's a little fiddly in that way, but it's 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 but a classic I don't reason. Have, tomorrow, uh, I won't be playing it. I'll be playing D4 again. But, uh, <laughs> you know, well, there's no D4. It's a great reason to get into D2. So I have Diablo sickness. No video game programming this week for me. Since, since beta hit, it's been nothing but Diablo and work. So... You know, I think, I think once the beta resolves, I'll get back to it. But man, that Diablo game is really good. Well, it's really good. Like there's, you know, the, the, all of those people making the videos, they have great things to say, mm-hmm. you know, and all that. But generally speaking, overall, this is like a real hit game. It's not, they're not going to flub this one and they might not get it all perfect. Yeah. But it's going to be worth paying for if you like the, this kind of game, I think. I 100% agree. I'll be playing the shit out of it on launch. Pretty much guaranteed. It's going to be insane. All right. Well, there you have it. Those are the games we played this week. We're going to take a break. When we come back, dear Martha, with a massive bunch of screenshots this week. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah, you got you to gotta be on your on your game. I'm going to be. They're this gonna, is, They're going to come at you fast and furious. I've been practicing. I got all. I'm ready. Muscle memory ready to rock. So let's do that. <laughs> yeah. um, that's coming up. We got uh, some other news we want to hit. Can't believe there's a Counter Strike sequel coming. We'll talk about that, as well as a call, some some texts, and some other stuff. But y'all got to come back to hear it. So don't go too far. We'll be right back. All right, uh, go pee or you know whatever. Pee mainly pee. Maybe poo if you have to poo. It's fine. Whatever you got to do. Uh, that means you people at home. And uh, we'll be back in uh, five or so minutes. Nothing too long. Nothing too crazy. And we will keep continuing down the path known as live core recording. Okay? Okay. Uh, Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Let's play some music for this. Why don't we? You know what? Let's play some Diablo music. I have some right here. Diablo. Right there. Let's do that guy. All right. We'll be right back.
Diablo music. It was great. Yeah, from four. People are starting to capture the stuff so I can get a hold of it finally. Yeah, I know. That music was pretty good in that game, too. Yeah, it's a big I mean, package, it's aces man. Aces across the board, man. Yep. I think. It's like, it, in some ways, I know we didn't talk about it, uh, but it reminds me of... It's it's like that team got to be the blizzard we remember. <laughs> you know? I like, think so. I think. I, I there's, there's a lot of love poured into it. Well, that effort you can see. Yeah, you can feel it. It's real good. It's not every things are not going to be everyone's cuppa, right? I think that much is certain, but overall, like it's it's a solid effort. Hell of a thing. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, John's back, so we can do this. Uh, only one moment here. Okay, Get to save that. There we go. All right, we're back, everybody. Time for a dear Martha. This is a big one. Uh, John here has uh, written an, an epic, it sounds like. Oh because no, lot. it's actually one of the shorter ones I've ever done. Is it really? That's right. why That's why you got to be on the ball, Scott. There's going to be <laughs> fast yeah. image shifting here. Damn. All right. Well, I'm excited to do it and see how it all goes. Let's get right into it. Enjoy. My dearest Martha, looking at the cyclochronometer on my wrist... It's clear this letter is getting to you around the time for the release of Resident Evil 4 Remaster. So, I thought it would be fun to review a magazine from the time of the original release. What shocked me though was as I perused my local magazine stand looking for Resident Evil 4 covers, I didn't see any. Despite going on to become one of the biggest and best games in the series, a game that would change survival horror and action games, it wasn't setting the magazine racks on fire, apparently. I did, however, manage to see the name written in the upper corner of Game Pro issue 198 from March of 2005. So let's see what was going on in the world of gaming when this game first came out compared to now. Martha, this was the fleshy age of gaming. <laughs> An age where the more skin you showed, the more badass you were. Unreal Championship 2 taught us that the neck, hands, and legs were the only parts women needed protecting. Champions Return to Arms dedicated literally three ad pages to the armored bikini. Kratos continues to be protected by a loincloth and red paint. Dante kept his nips covered with a leather strap. <laughs> and finally, samurai legend Musashi showed that a crop top is the best way to have a samurai duel. This was also just a crazy time for games, Martha. I picked this issue but it contains reviews for some incredible games. Obviously, Resident Evil 4. The, they gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Oddworld Stranger's Wrath, which also got a 4.5. Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, which got a 4.0. Uh, and World of Warcraft, it got a 4.5. And EverQuest 2, which got a 4.0. Which reminded me all over again that those MMOs came out right next to each other. With the benefit of knowing the future, it made their head-to-head -head section of EverQuest 2 vs. World of Warcraft more interesting. They compared the games on only two categories, which naturally allows for no winner. They gave the playability edge to World of Warcraft and the complexity edge to EverQuest 2, which ended with the following statement. World of Warcraft is a lot more streamlined, which could mean players won't stay for the long haul. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Speculation that ages like a fine cheese in the Arizona sun. <laughs> With all that said, Martha, I hope you are excited for the remake of one of the greatest video games ever made. And you have to believe me on that. I'm from the future. Just remember, as you wonder how much has really changed since 2005, that this is a screenshot the magazine chose to prominently feature to show off the game. Uh, sorry for this one, audio-only people. Until next time, Martha. <laughs> S. Beckett, 2005. How? Uh, hang on a second. 
how, how is that? How is that? That why did they do that? That looks terrible. That screenshot. That's horrid. And that got people excited about video games. I uh, guess so. Wow. All right, you're right. That was very rapid fire. Uh, and a very fleshy age, indeed. I feel like video game magazines wouldn't be that way today. I don't know why. Just uh, I, I like th I like the champions. Uh, whatever it was, champions. What was it called? Champion. Uh, champion. It was. That, it was. Like it was the sequel right to there, Champions right? of Norath, but it was called something else. Champions Return to Arms. That's what. Oh, it was. that's what it the is. second one. I like that they were like, "Hey, this golden bikini thing is really funny." What if we did three pages of advertisements about a golden armor bikini? Yeah, yeah. Because it's that funny. Yeah, it's hilarious, really. And uh, boy, they just went, they did went they, and went and went. It seems serious. Was it funny? <sighs> I mean, they, I, I don't know. May, I mean, maybe it was. The maybe glory of battle. Yeah. Then it's like her in in just the un, her under armor. Yeah. And uh -huh. then she's looking at. You know, like a rack, like you'd see in Diablo, like an armor rack, yeah. right? With the bikini on it, not yeah. much more. Yeah. And now she's kitted out with not much more on, and she's armed herself for the fight of her life. Yeah. Um, very I expensive. I don't see a joke here. <laughs> like I'm just... It's just very expensive, is my main takeaway. When you do that much uh, advertising. To be fair, that game was good. Was it? I writ. Yeah. I don't remember that being good. Was, oh, was, no, no, no. You know what? That yes. was good. That was like um, they did with Baldur's Gate. Uh, yeah. It was the yes. same people, the Dark Alliance games. It that was a that good game. Vein. Yep. I take it back. That is an excellent game. The ads are a little weird, but I think that game was rad. You're totally right. Uh, good call on that one. And that would be worth playing uh, that kind of game. I love those games, and I know that that Baldur's Gate game is on Steam now, but it looks like ass. I need yeah, those. Yeah, it to... didn't get good reviews either. Which yeah, is not well received. I need those to get like a real nice look to them before I play them again. But I remember at the time on my PlayStation Two thinking that was a pretty rad game, and my friend who or my brother in law was really into EverQuest and hated WoW just because he was into EverQuest. That was the only reason. Yeah. Um, he, I, I remember that when he, that came out on console, he was like, "Yeah, you don't see any World of Warcraft console games, do you? Never see that happen." <laughs> I mean. He's he's not wrong, it's right? Not wrong. It's not wrong. It's <laughs> not wrong, but maybe not making the point that you want. To no, make. I mean at this stage of the game, we still had, we were aware of StarCraft Ghost, at this point, um, and that was still being made. And I was like, well, that's going to be the hot new Blizzard game on consoles. You wait, that'll be the one. Nope, that shit didn't happen. That ship never sailed. You bastards. All right, let's move on. Where are we now? I don't even know. Oh, uh, we're going to do um, uh, some other news. And this is good stuff here, so sit back and relax. For example, the long-rumored, or I don't even, it wasn't even that loudly rumored, but there were players who rumored this for a while, that Counter-Strike 2 was indeed in the works, like a, a brand new Counter-Strike game. Not an update to global operations, but like a legit sequel is now confirmed and real, and Valve has confirmed it. And based on the smoke effects alone, Bo might play it. Can you believe it? Yeah. So this that I, I mean, have you seen the video? Yeah, I'm gonna show it again. This video? I, I kind of want to. I kind of want to play it. Yeah. But I am scared. Like here's the here's the thing. This isn't like Counter Strike Two. Everybody's back to square one. Let's get back into it. They are doing faithful recreations of what's already there. So the fact that I am god awful at Counter Strike. Yeah is a skill that I will carry over into Counter-Strike 2, <laughs> and I will be starting god-awful at it as well. Yeah. But, man, seeing, uh, what is it, D.E. Dust? De is Dust, that the yeah. abbreviation for it? Yeah. Um, seeing, seeing those maps again, I was like, oh, holy shit, look at that. I should totally play Counter-Strike again, because I used to play the hell out of Counter-Strike, and... I get excited seeing it. I do too. But I know I'm bad at it. I tried to play CSGO a while back. I took three steps and died. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know why it happened. And I was like, I don't think I'm good at this game anymore. I don't I don't think I can play it. Oh, this I little just... Italian village thing. I love this map. Sorry, go ahead, Bo. No, no, it's okay. You're showing the level up video, but uh, you should show the you should really show this. The smoke thing really sold me. Yeah, where is that in this? I was like, because they're they because this is Valve doing interesting mechanics. Like it, it's you know, I'm not sold on the flashy graphics. I'm sold on the 
innovation in mechanics and games. It's it's like if you're on the Valve YouTube, yeah, it the should smoke be the is super next cool. video. I'll find it here. Um, I thought I had it. I thought that was it. Oh, here it is. Smoke grenades. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Uh, responsive smokes is what they. I was like, what kind of trailer is called responsive smokes? Like I didn't know what it was till I saw it, and then it's like, oh my god, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, I mean the thing I realize is, smoke's uh, important in this game. I actually right? think. Oh, here we go. Look at this volumetric stuff. Oh, like a little dome of smoke. You gotta go deal with. Oh. Right. So the smoke like fills spaces like normal smoke would, but like it's mapped out, and you can clear it with like some. There's a grenade that clears it, and certain guns will shoot holes in it, giving you visibility and the enemy visibility, kind of like this chess match where you can shoot through it. And see, like, they're shooting it in closed spaces, and it's, like, just filling up the way, like, you know, smoke might, but, like, just clearing the, see, like, whoop, boom, shooting through the smoke. Like, I was like, yo, they're doing something interesting with the smoke. It's, I don't know, it's just really, really impressed me. I, I agree. I love the smoke grenade anyway. It was one of my favorites, but now this looks like it's, I don't know, there's more to it. Um, it's, like, I think, it's, just, it's just innovative, you know, in, in, in a game where shooters, the only innovation is, tends to be the graphics a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know. It just seemed like chess matchy, strategic. I really appreciated what I saw, and I was like, maybe I want to. I never really played any Counter Strike. Maybe I want to play this. This is, this is compelling. Well, this is what uh, I'm excited about because I feel like this is a major. There's a strategy happening here that is a, a corporate one that I just want to mention. Um, for a long time, Valve owned the competitive shooter uh, team shooter market for a long time. This game, even when it was a mod, and they purchased the rights to it. Uh, Team Fortress 2, they owned that stuff. Like there was nobody else doing anything quite like it. And now the world is filled with competitive shooters of various types and kinds. And Blizzard, or not Blizzard, Valve got kind of behind that or got behind the, 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 the especially run. with Valorant, right? Valorant's yeah, Valorant, like, lunch. yeah, exactly. Like that directly eating their lunch, right? Kind of same yeah, gameplay. Even if you're just like a subgenre, the like tactical shooter, like that's. Yeah, Valorant is like getting all the attention now. So of. this, and what this tells me is, is this is them going, all right, we're going to take some of the shit back. We're going to like put something out that's like a huge deal. We're going to make all kinds of marketing around it, and we're going to innovate with it. We're going to make Counter Strike matter in a major way again. And well, the subtext. Yeah. So they're also they're also bragging that like there's no lag, no like the smoke you see is not instance, you know, because some stuff like that, like blood splatters. Yeah aren't one-to-one necessarily on each client, but this apparently is going to have the most synchronization of machines of any, like, multiplayer lobby, yeah. including, like, way, the way the smoke's shaped and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I really respect it. I don't have an eSports in my life, and I was like, oh, maybe I should just try. I don't know. I, the marketing worked on me. I was like, oh, maybe I should play. A yeah, I kind of want to, too. It sounds That's like cool. John's, John might be down. Maybe we'll be playing that together. I don't know. I might. I, I would play with a friend with the squad of friends. Absolutely. Yeah. I suck otherwise. There you go. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. We can I would all do, be bad yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is uh, cool. The, um, but the biggest surprise to me was it's this summer. It's coming out in like a few months. Yeah, it's Valve pulling yeah. a Valve. They're just like, yep, here it is. Here you go. I love that. I'm like, and so they just need to do I'm that. I'll never expect Half-Life. another sequel because it would be a three. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the other thing, right? There's no three in this. This is two. Um, uh, the the rumored stuff with uh, uh, Team Fortress that could be their first three if that's if those rumors are true. Yeah, uh, there could be there could be room for them to do that. I want to. Uh, they need to release Half Life Three already. They teased it. Come on, yeah. Come on, guys, get that shit out. I think there. I think there's a push at Valve to to get back into what made them what they are in the first place. I really do. I could be wrong, but I just get a two years would be great. You know, like yeah. I don't know. Just get a get feeling. Every valve property to two, and then do the orangiest box and put all your threes in it. Yeah, oh. make it orangey. Hey, your wife would hate this game though, John, because you you see in the credits at the end of each of these, there's like a really yellow get logo. Look at that. Look how yellow. Yeah, that she'd is. be like, I don't like that logo. Yeah. By a, the way, yeah. by the way, <laughs> I want it. Like, I know they're worried about sickness. I want Portal VR. Oh, are they worried about sickness with that because of the movement? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I read an interview because they decided on Half-Life because it was less sickness-inducing than the Portal franchise, which would arguably be a better showcase of VR than Half-Life, if you think about it. Right. Um, But I need me some Portal VR. That would be sick. I've been tempted to get into 
What was the recent? They did some recent portal update. Was it that maybe they just added ray tracing? RT, or they added ray tracing to Portal One. I was tempted they to get just to look at that and see what's up. You know, yeah, didn't do yeah. it, but I love that game so much. Yeah, we like Valve games. Release more of them, please. Thank you. Bye. I saw the dirtiest Valve, or sorry, the dirtiest Portal parody on that Paradise PD cartoon. It was so dirty. I've sent you guys a couple of clips of that show. <laughs> But oh, it was so dirty. The thing this guy figured out how to do with the blue portal and the orange portal and what it helped him do, I can't even say the well, words. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I can already think of 100 <laughs> dirty uses for that thing. That's great. It was foul, but it was pretty great. And then there was this, I don't know if I sent it to you guys, but the main character goes, Portal 3, come on, Valve. And they starts yelling at the screen and knew everything. Like, why is there no Half-Life 3? And no, um, meta commentary. Yeah. He's like, that VR thing didn't count. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, these guys know their stuff. Anyway, uh, let's move on to Resident Evil 4 Remake out tomorrow or tonight, if you look at it that way. John's got it. Uh, uh, I have it. We'll be uh, streaming it together at some point. John will be probably streaming a bunch of his alone, as I assume. I don't know. You can stream yeah, that or just play that. What are you going to do? Yeah, I think I'm going to stream some of it tonight. I don't know if I'll stream all of it because uh, I have a patience problem. I, don't, I have a hard time I'm scheduling games I really like. But yeah. You know, I'll probably be streaming at least the intro tonight and we'll see from there. And I'm really looking forward to playing that game with you. I don't think it's going to be as scary. Like Resident Evil 4 is not the scariest one in the series. It's a little more actiony, right? Is the yeah, idea. I think you'll be I think you'll be fine. I played uh, parts of 4 and it still scared me back in the GameCube days, but I'm easily freaked by games. So everyone knows this. It, it'll still scare me. But but John's right. It's not meant to be. 7 is still the pinnacle, I think, of scare. For me, uh, Village yeah. was even a step down from that, even though it had that baby, which was the single grossest, awful thing I ever did in a game. But you had a hard time with two as well, the two remake. There was one clip of you, I think it's the one where you just say, I can't do this anymore, and you walk away, where I was like, is that okay? <laughs> like, it's probably good that I didn't watch that live, because I probably would have sent you a text and been like, you're all right, right? Yeah, you okay? Do you need uh, Do you need to talk to anybody? It was bad. What was that called? Um Shoot, there were two of them, and I ended up playing the sequel because someone bought it. Uh, shit. Whatever oh, it was. no, I'm not talking about that. But yes, that one, too. The um, what was it? Out the out outlast outlast no. outlast. Yeah. No, was it outlast? I don't know. Shit. One where you're the journalist in the uh, insane asylum, right? Yeah. And, that, that, yeah, that's the one where you like lean back in your chair and like seemingly like, convulse for a little bit. That's pretty bad. But in the Resident Evil 2 remake, there's one where you end your stream early. And <laughs> I was just like, is he okay? Because Mr. X was after you and you were just like, guys, I can't right now. And yeah, dude. You're like that's that's the end of the stream. And you ended from like the pause menu and it's like is scott okay yeah is that he gonna guy, make it through this this mr x crap is really bad they didn't put one in this did they just four have one chasing me around that doesn't happen does I it i mean no i don't know i mean the chainsaw guys have always been hard to kill but i don't think they they don't really chase you throughout the game or anything so i think you'll probably be okay what's the inventory sitch do i have to play tetris in there every five minutes or? you you know what i don't want to hear complaining about it scott because you played the game that was nothing but the inventory <laughs> system from resident evil 4 you played an entire game based around it so you don't get to complain about this one it was fun because i never saw anything scary it was just me moving <laughs> stuff around um all right well anyway that's coming soon watch for that uh there's also a game uh, called Tax Heaven 3000. Not Haven, yeah. Heaven. Uh, Tax Heaven 3000, it helps you do taxes. It got dis it got delisted from Steam because um, they claim they're going to help you do your taxes, and they, they're they not allowed to do that. That's an illegal thing to do. But it, I saw it, and I went, oh, John would play this because look at this anime girl. Right? <laughs> I would not play this, to be clear. <laughs> I'm not going to do my taxes through an anime game, but I do think it is pretty silly. Like, they, they have gussied up this anime dating sim looking game to help you do your tax returns i, I think, think it be, got i think it would help me do mine if the, it was a game like this well the problem is it's asking you for a bunch of personal information it's saying right you need your privacy concerns yeah. you know but if like TurboTax wanted to do this 
You know, like there are actual like H and R blog. I don't know what do you guys have in the states. We have that like, H and R. Sure. Yeah. Maybe you that. know, you go to the site and you file it out in line. Well, why don't they make it a visual novel? Like, <laughs> why don't they hire a... anime ladies to why? work in H and R blog? Or, or or men or just characters, Overwatch care. Like you can pay for whatever. It can be Deckard Kane. You miss him a lot. Uh, pull up a chair and let me help you with your taxes. You, you miss know, him like, so much. Why don't you let him do your taxes? Yeah. Like we could, you know, we're paying you money. Why aren't you video gaming up? And hey, we got AI voice chat. You can, don't even have to pay the voice actors. You can just get chatbot to make something close. What if you could do just go into VR chat and then you real people just dressed as an anime bunny girl or whatever oh is doing God. your taxes? You know, there probably is an H and R block in VR chat. Let's let me go research. I'm just that picturing Bo's avatar from the last time he was there. That weird dog thing, sitting down and being like, "Hello." <laughs> uh, so I'm looking to. Uh, do your tax returns for you. <laughs> I wouldn't trust any of this. This is all about. And you're idea. like, yeah, this seems this seems above board right here. Like, this is great. I barely well, trust I real accounts. A professional avatar to process my taxes. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting though. We haven't. I mean, I think was uh, my not MySpace. What am I trying to say? Uh, uh, what was the fake world that was Second like Second Life? Second Life. Jeez. Yeah, but then they they had they tried to have a bunch of real businesses in there, and I can yeah, see yeah, a thing yeah. like that. They they the whole thing was like the real world will, will be replaced with cyberspace. Yeah, and everyone's like, I just want to play Diablo, man. I don't want this shit. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Some people did like it, but I, it wasn't going to be a place where everyone's going to go. No, and the metaverse isn't going to be that either. They need to. I still like the online chat rooms and fun places, fine, but yeah, they're not. It's not the next Facebook. Or MySpace. No, for sure. Facebook still thinks it is, but I don't think it is. It's an extremely well, good idea as long as I trust the pink anime lady. Yeah, I'm that's just the not trick. Not sure if I trust the. How pink does anime how does she lady. build trust for you, the pink anime uh, uh, bunny lady? How does she do it? What do you need her to do? To um, I think I let other people use her services for a couple years yeah. and see how they turn out, and if they uh, don't go to jail or suffer identity theft then maybe i trust the anime lady okay so we need you need some i need recommend recommend referrals I need, I mean, yeah and not like amazon reviews like this product is the best product i've ever product yeah that makes sense to me um yeah the game i guess i'm reading about some of the details there it looks like it did it asks you for your social security number it asks you for your tax id numbers uh, this anime lady does and the game the game developers or the publishers are saying well you're no one is expected to put their real info in there but then they see some stuff further down oh. where it says the whole idea well, was what that, do you what do you put in there then? yeah what are you supposed to do so now they're putting on an itch.io that's ha still going to happen there in a week yeah so i'll never use no. it no way in hell <laughs> it's not enjoy, enjoy getting screwed yeah get screwed like the best way possible by an anime bunny girl that sounded wrong. Uh, let's move on to uh, this one. Oh, um, Sony is Metacritic's highest rated publisher of 2022, uh, which reaffirms what I believe, which is this. Sony doesn't, for the most part, make any bad games. They make amazing games, but they also make some amazing mistakes. <laughs> I, gonna, I thought it was, it reconfirms what we've all known is that they will die a horrible death if they're not allowed to publish Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If they don't, if they can't possibly publish Call of Duty, how will they survive? They will. Um, they can't. They can't. It can't be done. But they, I mean, they really do. They make, they don't make any shit game wise. They just don't. They don't know how to do it. Their, their self publishing stuff is as good as games have ever been, really. Like they just have a non lose record. It's just the behind the scenes decision making right now that seems a little weird. And I don't get it. Well, I know what it is. It's just they're trying to keep they're trying to keep market share and trying well, to keep dominance. I mean, one way to look at it is Sony puts effort like Nintendo does to at least support their system with high quality offerings. Mm -hmm. One can say maybe Microsoft. Like my what are the first party Microsofts for the console like Halo, mm -hmm. you know, which you, even though they're really good, I don't think you can hold a torch to the sheer level of like graphical quality and, and game quality that Sony releases have on average. Yeah. And it is you on know, like, average. I, I can't think about. of many Microsoft titles, but I can think of a whole slew of Sony titles, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I agree. 
their, so their it's, first it's party almost is, like, is awesome. Yeah, it's you almost might be like, well, might, what's Microsoft bringing to the table? Yeah, they have a console. Yeah, they got their pass, but like you know, they're not like us putting major effort to bringing high quality games mm-hmm. to the world. Well, here's the top ten. This is interesting. Sony Interactive Entertainment at eighty five point six average rating. And again, this is Metacritic, so whatever you want to make it at. I think it's still interesting in data. Uh, Paradox Interactive, number two, 81.6. Uh, that th- surprises me. Same. I was surprised. Well, they have really <laughs> high rated games. I do not think of quality when I hear Paradox Interactive. I think of that middle of the road video game where it's going to be a little iffy, but mm. you'll get there and it be fine maybe kings well, kings whatever it is what's it called the one we all think what are some of the titles because like maybe their batting average is obviously pretty good well, like stellaris the console version of stellaris rated really well that year what else was that's, there that's paradox paradox yeah paradox does a lot yeah. of the um oh crusader kings that's crusader right. that kings. was reviewed really really well yeah crusader so. yeah, kings had alone. a lot of good releases yeah, maybe they're before. all right yeah. maybe they're it's crusader this year crusader, like they've had their yeah They've had their controversies in there. I think yeah. mentally I put them in the same box as Joe Wood, which is maybe a little unfair. Mm. City Skylines is a popular yeah. game. I well, think King Crusader Kings 3 may be enough to skew the average their direction because that game got like straight across the board 10s out of 10s from almost everybody. So maybe that's why they're so high. But they are not too far... Well about four six percent difference between them and the next one which is activision blizzard Ooh, 76.5 last year um that's <laughs> the weird thing it turns dragon, out that well, helps dragon them. flight dragon flight right like i guess this is as of 2022 not only games in 2022 oh wait so this is their entire published catalog this, yeah this is this is as of 2022 the highest rated metacritic scores of all these publishers not developers mm-hmm. not per se but publishers so activision That's blizzard of weird. course are going to have all your vi- blizzard that games that doesn't seem fair that doesn't i mean seem right it does say hold on let's see it should be limited to the date range like if 10 yeah. years ago they got great marks like that's not relevant not to their current no, I, I take it back this is just for that year well then what did blizzard do one game dragonflight which was i think well liked enough like chat also that... says overwatch 2 oh right yeah. <laughs> it's like the John's like <laughs> it would never come I up know. had chat not said I know, it. Yeah. but you know it's yeah. true. It I did didn't mind out. Overwatch too, but in this analysis, I kind of minded. I was like, mm. uh, blow I them. Guess. Focus Entertainment, Take Two, Capcom, Sega, uh, Annapurna Interactive, Humble Games, and then finally Devolver Digital at number ten. It's a pretty I'm good surprised list. Surprised there aren't other developers on this. <laughs> yeah, it's an interest. Like it's an interesting list when Paradox is second. Because mm. they're like a PC only game, I would expect to see more console juggernauts. Like, no Square Enix on this list. No, no Square, Square Enix um, released a lot of shit. No Ubisoft on this list. Yeah, no well, Ubisoft released a lot of shit. Same problem. Actually, they hardly released anything in 2022. Because like, like, it's not about like volume. In fact, volume could probably hurt you because yeah, if you sure. release two really well reviewed games, you're going to look better on Metacritic than somebody that released. 15 middle of the road games but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. it's kind of weird interesting to see sega on like in seventh place oh and it yeah. tells you where they were previously so last year sony was number two paradox was not listed last yeah. year no. activision blizzard was fourth whoever was number one is not on this list no, for i don't know who that year. was i wonder who that was that's weird so they I mean, had this a fall is cri- mm. this was critical score so it would have been like, um, well, was Elden Ring the game of the year in 2022? It was, right? So, From Software is not even on this list. Like, how does this make any sense? Yeah, but they didn't publish, did they? It wasn't Warner. Warner Brothers did, right? But wait, who published? I can't remember who published it. Yeah, this I'm is just check publishers. Steam, but like, I'm like, you know, <laughs> the game of the year is not on the list. Like, how does that even make sense? Elden Bandai Ring. Namco. Oh, oh, they release a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Bandai <laughs> yeah. Namco. Like, AKA, Elden Ring's really bro- getting drugged down does by it, some it, Dragon Ball Z and One Piece <laughs> business, I think. Bandai Namco, a.k.a. does it have a bitmap? Let's ship it. You know, uh, like, yeah, you're right. You're right. About that. Um, Sega held it. Sorry, Ka- is it Sega? Sega went up by one. Capcom sorry, stayed the same. Capcom at six both years, yeah. Interesting. 
I would have put Devolver higher for my own personal taste. Yeah. But. So this, what this tells you though, is who is consistent. Yeah. And uh, well, you know, I think it's. Well, I mean, even in Sony being Activision, at number yeah. one and last year being at number two shows a good deal of. Oh, that's Activision Blizzard. That counts their Call of Duties and shit. As yeah, well. yeah, it's all of it. So. Yeah. Oh, of, so yeah, they launched. They and released. Call of Duty did well last Probably year. Probably at least two Call of Duties. Modern there. Warfare yeah. Two is well regarded. They did real good with that. Yeah, it's so. even it's a meme too. I don't even understand it. That Skullface guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a Call of Duty meme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, Elden Ring got uh, ray tracing support this week. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, you know, I think what's going to happen when that DLC drops, I'm probably going to play again. Now you that's play it? RTX too. I'm like, mm-hmm. you should do it. You got the card for it. I now. I have the itch to play that game again yeah. as well. Yeah. Don't make me pretty do consistently. It. I have fun. the itch to play it's that an, game. It, it, what I think Diablo Two Resurrected is what made me think of that game because the feeling I get from that because you have to play through the campaign is like oh I'm on a journey like I'm on this hero's journey going from A to B through all the zones and Elden Ring has that feeling as well. I'm just like we're not explaining we're explaining very little about what's going on and go out and journey into this weird unusual world. Yeah. And, uh, now with RTX, I can get owned <laughs> in even more vibrant colors. Covered in shadow and light. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. Uh, well, anyway, that's your uh, that's all the news she wrote. But now we have emails. Actually, they're texts and calls. That's a good question. Look at this call we got. This is one about a thing. Um, this is a Switch and Mac user who plays a lot of his games on those platforms that has a big question about Diablo 4. Check it out. Hey, core team. This is Josh. I've got a question for you as it relates to Diablo 4. I currently use a Mac and a Switch to play my games, so this means I've probably got to get a next-gen console to play Diablo 4. If you had to choose and didn't own either a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox right now, which one would you get and why? I mean, let's just say PC's off the table for a second for him because it sounds like it is. Um, I I think you're actually okay either either way. The whole the, the fact that those things are cross-save, cross-platform, if you ever had to move somewhere, you'd be okay. Um, but my personal pick right now would be Series X because that's kind of where I spend most of my time when I'm on a console. Um, mainly because I like Game Pass more than I like what Sony's doing with their offering. So that's usually where I am, but that's my reasoning for that. So if you're planning on getting Game Pass, then that would be the place I would go. Otherwise, I think it's Aces. I don't think there's a big difference. Do you guys have? Yeah, I mean, we just we just talked about you know Sony's first party being incredible and how you know their content is metacritic wise very very high number one and number two last year if you're really into playing sony games i think the ps5 is a no-brainer console to go with um but i am gonna because whenever anybody asks this game this question it, it lets me play a game of like let me let me be columbo let me figure this out here and I'm going to say that if you've been doing all your gaming on Mac and Switch, you're not big on the, I'm going to just constantly throw money at gaming, like a like a hobby. And in that regard, I would probably lean with the Microsoft console because in that case, you get a lot of games for, you know, if you get Game Pass, you get a lot of games for free. And the white, the white box is pretty cheap too. Like the... yeah. And and it's totally functional. Like the the smaller version of the Xbox, you do not have to buy the biggest and best. The the smaller version, the Series S, is completely competent. So, um, well, yeah, I'm in total agreement. Budget Xbox, but if you have the if you have console money, uh, buy the PlayStation. <laughs> buy the PlayStation because I feel like it's the more impressive device and has the library better library of exclusive to support it. And you might get yourself a PS2 VR headset, which you can't do with the Xbox. Or really, PSVR really paint yourself in yeah. a non-VR corner if you're not a PC enthusiast uh, getting wasting money on the Xbox at that juncture. Yeah. Uh, the PS the, At this point in time, if I didn't own an Xbox already, the PS5 is the more exciting and enticing console of the two of them. See, I thought that VR until I used both and have switches. both, and I think I disagree now. I I get yeah, so but much more value. Yeah, the VR, you know. Yeah, the the VR, VR to him, that's where gaming is. At. Like to me, that doesn't yeah. move the needle at all. But yeah. like, yeah. if that does move your needle, like, good yeah, point. That's the <laughs> obvious choice. 
Good Can point. You say that again, but slower. But my... <laughs> <laughs> if I... it does move your needle, the needle that I want to—I mean, I don't know how much Starfield's going to move many needles for too many people, but that's—I'm uh, also interested. John's in needle's not that. moving. No, his needle won't move for that. <laughs> no, my needle remains unmoved. Here's how you move John's needle. Uh... <laughs> yes, please tell us. <laughs> Can today's show be called Move My Needle? And that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Move John's it. needle. Move. I mean, we, should, <laughs> we, should do, we should do a theme thing and that, take a picture of John reacting. Let's do a contest. Whoever can move John's needle, you win. I, I don't know what you win. My wife is going to win this one. Yeah, she's at a natural <laughs> advantage. But, you know, you're all welcome to try, I guess. Give it a well, shot. We got to handicap her. I think she. you have to be paint, paint yourself up in yellow. Mm. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> yellow. Got to be dressed like a minion. Yeah, yeah. And play that yellow song from Coldplay. It'll all be perfect. Do it. Uh, all right, nicely done. What Let's do this. Uh, these texts here. These all came Beatles. to the same number, by the way. The phone call and these texts came to eight zero one four seven one zero four six two, and we got one here from an unlisted listener. He didn't say his name. Hello, this is for the gentleman of core. On a recent episode, Bo said he received his Lake Run sticker and asked, "Where should I put it?" May I suggest he put it on a glass fish bowl full of goldfish crackers, Swedish fish, and unwrapped Tootsie Rolls. Have a good day, he says. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a... Where do I get a fish bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Step one. Look that up in the chat. Goldfish GPT. crackers, I think I could do... I don't know what Swedish fish is. Does he mean like fika fish? Uh, what's a fika fish? I don't know what that is. It's like, it's like canned gross fish that makes you barf, but some people like eating it. Really? Um, yeah, it's like pickled that. fish. I don't know why I've never like heard that. of that. It, doesn't, it seems like a weird thing. Um, uh, and, or it's like, um, is it lut? Lutefisk? Yeah, well, it's, I think it's in that general. The stinky fish? Range of, yeah, it's stinky fish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Swedish fish or candy. Okay, never mind. <laughs> and unwrapped Tootsie Rolls, right? There's a theme here. I should have put that together. Crackers, Tootsie Rolls, Swedish fish must also be a snack. Yeah. Okay, all right. I like uh, it. It's a good suggestion. By the way, John Jagger, I don't know if you knew this. I forgot to tell you guys this. I asked Chat GPT the other day. I have access to uh -huh. 4.0 for reasons I can't disclose. And it's pretty amazing. But I asked it who John Jagger was. Would you like to hear what it answered? <laughs> yes, please. John Jagger is a software consultant and coach with over 30 years' oh, experience yeah, in software development. He's known for expertise in test driven TDD, uh, re, uh, sorry, retro factoring and agile software development practices. So there you go. You're a frequent speaker at development conferences and things like that. So I really learned a lot about you. Uh, and then I did it for Bo Schwartz. Where is it? I lost it, I think. Let me I, I mean, that you is, if you, running. the reason there's That's an the underscore pictures. in my Twitter account is because of that John Jagger. Um, so oh. he's out there. If I ever try to get published, I'm going to, I'm going to say that I'm already a published author because if they look it up, they'll see it. I like that. Okay, I did. Yeah, okay, that's the plan. for some reason, Bo's got deleted, so I'm going to research it. Here we go. Oh, this didn't do it this time. It says, I'm sorry, but I could not find any notable person or public figure named Bo Schwartz in my oh, database. Fuck you, <laughs> ChatGPT. God, I hate AI so much. I know, much. it sucks because you should be, and you were, but it wasn't you, so I don't know. All right, Sorry. let's see. You know what? Listen, Just for... I don't. I didn't hear about my Wikipedia page. Is anyone working on that? I can't do it myself. No. Like someone has to. You can. Think but... I'm notable and make the page for me. Please. You can, but it's it's not. It's frowned upon, right? To do that. Yeah, like I'm not saying I'm not paying, engaging anyone. I'm just saying I think I'm notable. I think you're notable. Is yeah, it, I think you're notable I mean, as hell. I think I think I'm notable, and just because other people haven't noted me doesn't mean they shouldn't be noting me. Yeah. Um. I when Note I asked me, please. <laughs> I asked it who I was and it got it right, but then it said, "Perhaps you mean a this." Let's see, Scott Johnson is a podcast or sorry, podcaster and cartoonist lives in Utah. Blah blah blah. blah. Then I got Scott Johnson is musician, composer, best known for the founding of the rock band, the Scott Johnson Band. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, really nice creative. way to go. It's a real creative name. <laughs> I'm I'm also the CEO of a software company called Atlas Cyan. Okay, cool. Oh, cool. Uh, I can right. write a tech manual to help you with that. Uh. Oh, this might. What is this? Oh, another one. Scott Johnson is an American political cartoonist, known for his editorial cartoons. And then finally, I am also potentially a former basketball player who plays in the National Basketball Association or the NBA for the Utah Jazz. I don't remember that. <laughs> well, now you now you're there. 
All right. Well, maybe anyway, you have a past life you don't know about. My maybe goal, music. My goal is to get all AI aligned properly to know who Bo is and to appreciate his many qualities. That's what I want. Well, I'm sure you got better things to do, but I appreciate it. Here's a final uh, message. This is from Jason, who wrote in and says, "What do you guys think comes out first, Star Citizen or the next Game of Thrones novel?" Oh, oh God! I have, a, I have an answer for this, Scott, and I would like to do it in the form of another dear Martha, if I may. Do it. Uh, let you me would be so some... kind as to cue it up. Here you go. My dearest Martha, or Jason. <laughs> <laughs> My dearest Everything Jason. Everything that ever comes out will come out before Star Citizen. <laughs> the four horsemen of the apocalypse will be stopped mid-ride being asked which ship they'd like to purchase with their pre-order. When our universe collapses in on itself and the resulting explosion of energy creates a new big bang, eons will pass as life returns to this bold new universe, and the first new primordial being walks upon this new earth. As they take those first monumental steps, they will have to decide if they want to participate in the new trading module of the Star Citizen beta program. <laughs> no! will say the earliest new life form. I don't think that game is going to come out. And without <laughs> warning, a forgotten memory of a universe that was will awaken in the atoms of the long... F and a long-forgotten voice will echo throughout the air. Um, actually, you can already play it. Have you even tried it? Maybe you... Maybe you should before you act like it's never coming out. Then, as quickly as the ghost of civilization's past appeared, it will vanish into the wind once more. The people of this world named this echo Copium, for it was the element that most made up the being. And while we will never fully understand how or why it came into being, we will never be able to talk about this obviously scam game that will never come out without hearing its words in our head. <laughs> <laughs> Yours in this life and the next, me on our Discord channel uh, a few months ago. Oh, man. I'm glad you were able to dig that up. That sounded very impromptu, and I was about to be incredibly impressed by your quick uh, quick uh, reading. Yeah, then I heard some big words, and I was like, oh, this is planned. <laughs> you read it somewhere, yeah. This that was, was great. This was prepped in some way, but it was very funny, actually. That uh, was very good. Nice. So we're getting a Game of Thrones novel first. Yeah, <laughs> woo! At least that's something. That's the positive go, takeaway. Way to go, Martin. Uh, Gurr good news, Martin. J. R. Martin. I don't no, think that's Gurr his name. Martin. J. R. R. What's the two R? What's the second R for? Yeah, G. R. R. Isn't it? Is it George? G. R. J. George? Yeah, G George R. R. Martin. It's J. R. R. Tolkien. G. R. R. Um, the muffin. <laughs> G. R. R. Muffin. I forgot what's his last name. I don't remember. Uh, Martin. <laughs> Gurr muffin. Oh, that's great. Kyle called uh, Benedict Cumberbatch he, he cucumber kind of bucket today, I and I about died. That's not nice. Have you ever heard him call Cucumber Bucket before? Because that's amazing. Cucumber Bucket? Uh, Benedict uh, yeah. Cumberbutt? That was Ky Kyle on the show today. Called him that, and I just about peed. I laughed cucumber so hard. Cucumber Button. <laughs> cucumber, no, Cucumber Bucket. It was perfect. Cucumber, cucumber bucket. bucket. Yeah, it was amazing. Anyway. Uh, the, the, well, Kyle's amazing. He's a good guy. He's, he's a funny dude. Uh, all right, that's it for today. I would like to mention some new patrons, though. Uh, Mark Gale, Erwin Mellon, Men... Menes? 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 Menes. <laughs> Leave my Menes alone. <laughs> I'm not sure how you say Erwin's name, other than the first name seems normal. Uh, Celtic? Oh, we're saying people's names. Sorry, man. No, you're totally yeah, fine. Yeah, I know. Well, they were it's a no, patron that... for a day before <laughs> Bo alluded is... to it being a body part. <laughs> that is Mene. That's Mene? French, oh, is it? Oh, I is think it? so. Mene. Oh, yes. Erwan Mene. He might be. I mean, Erwan is not really a French name, I don't think. Yeah. I, I Mene sound looks French to me. All Mene. right. Erwan Manus. Uh, <laughs> Celtic or Celtic, one of the two. Not sure which. Frank Whirl. Whirl. <laughs> World, and world. I told you a long time ago. Just do the first letter of the last name, and you are losing us so many patrons. Uh, I gotta you just quit it. Butcher these names. People are like, man, I yeah, I, I became a patron. Scott's gonna read my name, and then they got stuck with Frank Whirl. Don't don't worry about it. He still can't spell my last name. There's someone in Twitch chat asking for our Twitch channels, and he's like Bo Schwartz, and leaves out the C constantly. Oh, did I shit? 
I didn't yeah, mean to it's do okay. That. I just know it's like that's a, I just I'm not even gonna bother correcting you. You do I what you want. Always forget man, the C. You don't always. know my last name. I'm just pointing that out. I always <laughs> do that. I do it every time. I want you to have your Wikipedia page, but if I did it, no, I'd have you're the not. C maybe that's wrong. why they didn't find you. Maybe he didn't spell Bo Schwartz correct. You're oh. not necessarily wrong. There are Schwartzes with no C to make matters worse. It's oh. actually legit. Too. That is so, bad. You know. It's like Scots with one. There's also there's also Swartzes that are just S W A R T Z. Really? Those exist too. Yep. And John's got the one N and the no H. Yeah, people that yep. like that does bug me sometimes when people can literally see my name on Twitter. They're replying to me and they're like John with an H. I'm like, you can see it. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, J O N. Don't put an H. I where understand it doesn't defaulting to H because it's the more common spelling. But when it's right there. Yep. Have you, have you read yeah, not read Gar uh, Garbuckle? Garbuckle. Garfield. Hold on. Garfield. Tell Garfield. me more. <laughs> Tell me more about Garbuckle. <laughs> the yeah, Amazing I, I Adventures of Garbuckle. <laughs> I conflated John Arbuckle with Garfield and called him Garbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> That's killing me, dude. Garbuckle. Garbuckle. Oh, I hate uh, Mondays. Yeah. That old Garbuckle sure hates his Mondays, loves his yeah. lasagna. Yeah. Old Garbuckle. That made me and, laugh. Uh, oh, okay. Where the hell was I? Oh, uh, Michael Moorhead. I got that. That's an easy one. And Ryan Poole. Okay. Might be Pooley. I don't know. No, it's Poole. You got it right. Yeah, <laughs> you get no. it right. He right. is. What's the. It, maybe Ryan Poole can write in and explain why some pools have an E on the end. Like, what's the deal? Yeah. What is the deal? But, but what's up with that? Yeah, what's up like, with that? Like, it's their story. Is it, like, mean something? Is it, like, from the pools of Ireland or something? Sure. Know, you know. Yeah, why not? Also, Garbuckle. Why, why the E? Because want... this pool is a fancy pool. I want to make a cartoon Ooh. character named Garbuckle. Yeah, go I ahead. do. Garbuncle. I really do. I'll give you credit if I do it. Is, is he, like, Garpoon's brother? Garpoon and Garbuckle? Garpoon Gar and Garpunkle go to town? Oh, maybe that's it. Garpoon's last name, Garpoon Garbuckle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We never mm -hmm. did learn his last name. You might be right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, if you want to be like these awesome people and have your names read poorly by me, then join us at patreon.com slash core show. You'll never get commercials or any kind of ads of any kind if you do that. You'll also get pre-show content every week and other monthly benefits uh, that include artwork now. By the way, every month you get an artwork. Some of you should have been getting it since November, but we're fixing that and <laughs> sending it all out in chunks. We, I just didn't notice that we hit that level. And I went, oh shit, it's the drawing level. Um, so as a result, we're backtracking to them to give you enough art to cover all those months, plus new stuff coming out from here on out. So we got you covered. I think I already put a thing in the in the Discord explaining myself, so I don't know why I'm doing it here. But anyway, join us over there and get uh, all these benefits today. Patreon.com slash core show. Everything else is at frogpants.com slash core. And now we ta we pass the microphone to Grandma, who will uh, catch us up on what we played this week so that none of you will complain that we didn't say it enough. Grandma? Yeah, well summarized, Johnson. If only you were so good at summarizing the games, I wouldn't even have to be here. But as I'm here, I'll tell you exactly what they played. All three of them played the Diablo 4 beta, and they gushed about it for an hour or so. Scott played a lot of factory games. He played Factory Town, Factorio, Mindustry, Mindustry, Satisfactory, Factory Sam, Sam's Factory, Factory Fun, Farm Factory, Factory Farm, Satisfactory, Torio. He also played a game called Bakura, which is a two-player game that he played with his daughters. Very sweet. And he's going to play Resident Evil 4 Remake because someone bought it for him. John played The Last Spell. That's the tactical game. Oh, it's magic. And Bo played Diablo 2 Resurrected, which... I didn't know what it was because he wrote D2R and I'm old and I'm not hip with the kids shortening <laughs> Diablo 2 Resurrected to D2R. Oh, Grandma, it's not that hard. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was Dance 2 Revolution or something. I, I really did. <laughs> I know, I know. That Bo was I playing some VR too. thing or something, but you anyway. You suck, Grandma. Yeah, the you... only reason I was able to figure out before the show started that it was Diablo 2 Resurrected is simply because I know Bo well enough to say... No, as soon as they told him he couldn't play Diablo 4 anymore, he played a different Diablo game. That yeah. has to be something <laughs> yeah. Diablo related. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> also, I would totally play a game called Farm Factory, by the way. Just so you yeah, know. that was some good ad lib. Right yeah, there. that really was. You got you covered them all, and I would play them all, which is hilarious. Anyway, uh, that is going to do it for us. Thank you all for watching. 
And uh, if John ends up uh, streaming tonight while he's playing uh, Resident Evil 4, y'all should hop over there. He's at uh, Craftless Rogue on Twitch. Uh, yeah. you're, uh, you find me at Frog Pants, and you find Bo at Bo Schwartz. Don't forget the C. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It used to be Gafora. If you're going to visit Bo, don't forget the C. Don't forget the yeah, C. Should I switch it back to something else? I feel weird now having... Lately, I've been feeling self-conscious about having my full name. Have you? Now you can be Lorath. Lorath. With the gravelly Lord. voice. Yeah, I sure miss the stomach pain of titerial, you could say. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. Thank you all for listening, for watching. Have fun this week and all the games you play. And we'll see you next time. Bye. If you like what you just heard, there's a very good chance you will like all the shows on the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Tyrion does not understand. No, he does not. <laughs> Whose voice was that? That I was a Narius like there. At the end, that was a Narius, I think. Hold no, on. I, no, I mean the, the guy doing the frog pit, because that's definitely open AI. Right? Oh, no. Uh, yes. So, no, it's actually um, Eleven Labs, but yeah, it's an, it's an AI thing. But oh, that's what I mean, like it's an AI thing. But that's who my was emulating? That's Snow my one, favorite, uh, favorite audiobook reader, George Guidel. Mm. Um, he's dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do you hear, here, I'll play a bit. Um, 